Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Seattle, Washington. This is Husky Stadium under a gray October sky, but it's homecoming. And of course, many of the Husky faithful are here to embellish those stories about their experience in the past here at the university. The Washington Huskies today take on the Oregon State Beavers. The Huskies are four and two, and the Beavers are four and three, and they're very optimistic down in Corvallis because it's been a pretty productive year this year. They haven't had an over 500 record since uh, Tommy Prothrow coached this team in the mid 60s. Kevin Calabro with the broadcast this afternoon, and we'll talk to Steve Priest and Sonny Siskiller in just a moment. The order of the day for both coaches this afternoon: Mike Riley in his second year with the Beavers, and Jim Lambright with the Washington Huskies, rushing the football, getting it done on the ground. The basics: Oregon State held to less than 100 yards in three of the last four games. Ken Simonton, their promising young freshman, when he has gained 99 yards or better, has produced wins. They are four and with it. The Washington Huskies seven straight games without a 100 yard rusher and it's been since 73 the last season that they have not had a guy carry the football over 100 yards in a single ball game. Steve Priest joins us on the broadcast. Sonny Sixkiller as well and a lot of optimism obviously in Corvallis this year. Incredibly Kevin. This is the first time the Beavers have been four and three in nearly 30 years so you can imagine what it's like in the state of Oregon. Sonny it's appropriate that Jim Lambright would name Brock Ewart the starting quarterback this afternoon coming back after the shoulder injury October the third. It is homecoming. That's right. You don't lose your job here if you go down with injury and Coach Lambright is ecstatic that Brock Ewart is back in the lineup today. Number seven is a leader. He's a co-captain on this squad. Big emotional lift, as you can see right there. Co-captains voted in white pants for this ball game. Defensively, the Huskies have been awesome over the last couple of games. 26 sacks in two ball games. It's unbelievable. 26-2. You got Todd Johnson on the outside as a linebacker, but Jabari Issa up the middle has also gotten his share this season for the Huskies. Well, they both have good defensive units on the football field this afternoon. You know. Oregon State went three and eight last year and you learn a lot during a losing season I would think but penalties have still plagued them this year. Well penalties and fumbles fumbles primarily uh, they lead the Pac-10 and fumbles fumbles lost. They've done it at the wrong time too as you take a look here they'll get a big completion it's a big play can be a first down they lose the ball. It just hasn't worked out well the penalties the same way big plays they'll lose 30 yards on a penalty and another 40 with lost yardage. But defensively, the Beavers have sacks too. This guy, Anoki Brechterfield, called one of the finest, if not the finest, defensive player in the league. Leaves at every career statistic for Oregon State. You see him all right there. Um, he's been called the uh, best defensive player in the league, but the best quote I understand and like is that he plays with his hair on fire. <laughs> the Huskies have won 10 straight over Oregon State, 20 of the last 21, and the last Oregon State win was here back in 85 at Husky Stadium. We'll be right back with the kickoff. And some big plays like this from Tim Alexander, possibly the 100 yard run against USC and Joe Jarzinka last weekend, a 91 yard punt return for a TD in the win over Cal. Back in a moment with the kickoff. It's homecoming here in Seattle. Gray skies, cool temperatures, and the Husky faithful whipped up into a fever. The four and two Huskies will kick off, and Oregon State will receive. Tim Alexander will defer to his running mate, and Oregon State receives the football, and they'll start work at their own 20 yard line. As it was actually Alexander that stepped up. He's the money man at his own goal line and took it to the 19 yard line, and that's where Oregon State will begin work with Terrence Bryant. Out of Miami, Florida, the young left-handed quarterback, the junior college transfer, 6'3 and 203 pounds. Oregon State led by Mike Riley in his second year as head coach of the Beavers out of Alabama, class of 1975, previously the offensive coordinator at USC. So here we go. Homecoming begins with Oregon State handling the football. They've had difficulty running the football recently, and uh, Bryant will open up with a swing pass out on the left flat. It should have been caught, dropped at the 29 yard line. The intended receiver out there was James Battle. 
Let's take a look at the offensive line and what a line it is. Big fellas, White, Ramirez, Di Domenico, Cook, and Garden up front. And an experienced group. Ken Simonson, the young freshman over 700 yards thus far this year. Ainsworth, Alexander Tompkins, and Kuykendall. Oregon set up lone man in the backfield and Bryant once again to throw he's going to screen pass right side for a gainer 25 across the 30 tripping and just short of the 40 yard line on the reception was Ken Symington and Steve they set that one up beautifully. Well we haven't seen much screen this year out of Oregon State uh, this is something new they haven't featured it but Ken Symington has great great hands only nine catches thus far. Sonny a pickup of 18 for Oregon State and take a look at the defensive line they've been outstanding this has been the key really I think to the 26 sacks over the two games for Washington. Absolutely you see also the Brendan Jones the senior back there at safety is going to could be active against this passing attack. Ken Walker in at linebacker for Marcus Hairston who has had a an injury this week that's hampered him and we've seen Kenny Walker turn in some outstanding performances as Bryant on the first down situation tried to swing it near side to Roddy Tompkins incomplete it'll be second down for the Beavers. We've already seen what's happened to the Beavers a lot this year drop passes fumbles and penalties that's two drop passes already and it can't happen and win football games. Huskies have changed up their defense a little bit this week. They're playing their receivers a little closer to the line, as we can see here now. They're going to bump them at the line, aren't they? A little more pressure. You know, they've been getting a lot of sacks, as we had talked about, being very active, and that's bringing linebackers. And right there, you see Lester Towns, who, by the way, Kevin, is getting healthier and healthier every week. Ken Simonton shoestring by Lester Towns. He's had a great impact on the Husky defensive fortunes over the last couple of weeks. What about those white pants? What's the story there, Sonny? <laughs> it's a co-captain decision today, guys. Uh, Coach Lambright said the co-captains came to him, wanted to make a little change, do something a little bit different. And you know, when co-captains bring that up, it means it's a team thing. And Coach Lambright said, hey, if that's the way it's going to be, let's do it, and let's do it right. Third down and eight, and Ken Simonton thinks he's at home, and Corvallis is exalting the crowd to whoop it up. Third and eight for Oregon State. Beaver quarterback Brian back to throw. Swing pass right side complete to Simon at 45 at the 50. He stood up, but a flag on the play. Penalties have been a problem for the Beavers this year, but let's see what the early indication is. Well, it was thrown so late, it looked like a late quarterback hit. Dead ball, delay of game on the offense, five yard penalty, still third down. Wow. Normally you get those Kevin when the, the whistle blows before the play starts and you can see on the scoreboard here that uh, it does have a big zero looks like that Oregon State letter up there. <laughs> so the penalty pushes them back to the 30 just shy of the 35 yard line so it's third and 13 now for Oregon State. Line back to throw. He's got Simon coming out of the back door running around but he's going to fling it here to the near side and that was too tall on off the fingertips. Of his intended receiver down there, Robert Prescott. Local kid here, guys, uh, as Steve knows, out of Kennedy High School, Kevin. And he's had a very good year. Uh, he was injured early on, missed a couple of three games, just starting to come back uh, from a leg injury. Joe Jarzinka back to receive the Beaver punt. Jarzinka with 27 returns this year, averages 12 per, and of course had the 91 yard blast last week against Cal, and he never fair catches, folks, even inside his own 10. Here is the boot. It's a wobbler off to the left side that takes a Husky bounce for two and his bounce rolls up to the 44 yard line. So that ball kind of sucked up the field and headed down toward Beaver territory. A punt of just 21 yards net and the Huskies hold the football for the first time this afternoon and Brock Ewart is back 6'5 and 225. The junior from Puyallup Washington and you can bet he is anxious to get back in the flow 56 percent completion average. I think he is though guys but I think what the Huskies are going to do they're going to come out and try and get that running back running attack going right now you see Pat Conniff another guy they've been missing in a two back set they haven't had that in a while Steve. Well, the Beavers were run on last week uh, very well by the University of Arizona they just piled it up in a power eye tried to run over him because of their size it looks like the dogs have that plan. The senior Jason Harris would give up the medal and a gain maybe of a yard on the play. Let's take a look at the offensive unit. From Washington this afternoon, Elliot Silvers, Tony Coates, Brad Hutt, Chad Ward, and Aaron Dalen up front. As for the Huskies, Dane Looker will move back to the H back position. Jason Harris, Andre Desisure, Gerald Harris, and Reggie Davis, the other receivers. 
Second down nine for the Huskies. Ball resting at their own 45 yard line. Here's the handoff. And it's Harris pushing his way across into Oregon State Territory. And they'll mark it at about the 49 yard line. Oregon State defensively, and I should add, you're looking at the Pac 10's number one and number two defensive sack units this year with the Beavers number two, Jamil Braithwaite. Did I pronounce that right, Steve? Close. And he's a good one. Well, give it, give, give me the correct pronunciation. Jamil Braithwaite. Braithwaite. There we go. Rogers, Jackson, and Jones, Holland, Hatcher, Carroll, and Hayward Johnson. And that's a good defensive group that they put on the field. 12 interceptions thus far this year for Oregon State as well. Play action, handoff right side. Jarzinka from the H back position trying to turn the corner, hauled down, and spun out of bounds at about the 44 yard line. Jonathan Jackson there to cover for Oregon State. A little fancy play here by the dogs. You see a little end around, got the H back coming in motion. And one thing the Huskies need to do, Steve, is they're they need to get a little Joe in the action a little bit, and this time a good call by the uh, Scott Linehan, the offensive coordinator. And you see what the Beavers uh, depend on, speed. That's the middle linebacker getting out there to make the play. Joe Jarzinka accounts for over 100 all-purpose yards per ball game, and he picks up seven there for the first half of the Huskies. Here's the handoff, and running off the left side and picking up uh, a few hard-earned yards. We'll see who they pick up off the stadium floor. Pat Conniff, who's had some knee problems recently, but he's finally healthy this week. That's right. And, you know, Coach Lambright this week, when he stepped his foot on the field, you could just see a different presence by that offense. It's, you know, Steve, when you have a big fullback and you played with big fullbacks in your day with earthquake and everything in Oregon State, it means a lot having a little bit bigger guy in that backfield. Well, it certainly does. And also as a blocker, uh, to have that kind of lead man really helps. Man in motion, Dane Looker, he's the H-back. They try to track him. Here's Ewart, he's gonna snap a pass over here to the left side, it's Reggie Davis rumbling his way inside the 15-yard line, brought down at about the 13. Davis fouled the seam over there as they brought Looker to that side. The Oregon State had a lot of people to keep track of, a pickup of 25 on the hookup. Steve, you see him coming from the left side. He's going to just go out to the outside. Now, Reggie Davis is a very fast tight end. You can see by his waistline right there, he's not typical of the big blocking tight ends the Huskies have had in the past. And you've got to have a man on him with some speed, and that time he got the advantage. Well, no doubt. And, and Oregon State is missing their starting free safety. Terrence Carroll has not played since about the second quarter last week. It is a huge difference from the Beavers. Two-man backfield, and now Harris will go in motion. Here's the handoff. Pat Conniff out of Woodenville, rumbling his way across the 10 yard line and finally brought down at about the eight. So Pat kind of picks up five six yards on the play and the Huskies grinding it on the ground a bit now. Well that's what if they wanted to try and establish today against the Beavers very tough defense we've known that we talked about it and right here you see a tremendous hole in the middle Steve and hadn't been for Jonathan Jackson he might have gone all the way. But well, this is a smallish defensive line for Oregon State. They are not big. They won't compare in size to the Huskies offensive line. They bring in a lot of bodies to make up for it. Conniff and Harris, the two men split in the backfield now. Here's the handoff to Pat Conniff, and he heads like a missile right up the middle. And again, inside the five-yard line, grinds away to the four. Well, that's what you want to do. You want to stay low to the ground and keep your head and your and your weight, all your your body momentum going forward and Pat Conniff great job by a fullback right there. Brian Jones Aaron Wells team on the tackle for the Beavers. You know Steve you mentioned the size of the Beaver defensive front and Kevin. I've never seen a defensive front as short <laughs> as that <laughs> defensive four and you know you've got a quarterback that's six five. There's no nobody going to be in your eyesight. No this is a smallish team. In fact a lot of these guys uh, are not as big as the linebackers playing behind them. Inoki Brechter Field, the end is 5'11, but 250. And with a career of 17 and a half sacks. Here's Harris in motion. But the handoff goes to Pat Conniff. He's the money man on this charge inside the red zone of the Oregon State Beavers. And he grinds his way again inside the two yard line. Brechter Field's the team leader, the emotional leader out there. Does a great job of just raising havoc. Uh, he has to be double teamed in order to keep him out of the quarterback's face, or else the other idea is to run right at him, take advantage of his size. 20 out of 29 of the Huskies this year inside the red zone. And out of the 20, they've had 18 TDs. No score yet, 8.57 going. Got Marcus Tuyasasoko in there now. Four, 
And they switch Brock Hewitt out to the slot left side where they've got trips. He's going to option right. Two, he's in for the touchdown, but a flag fly. Right near the goal line, and the Beavers are indicating maybe a hold on Washington. Great weapon, a quarterback like that. <laughs> a little trickery. And it happens so quick. Holding on the offense. Ten yard penalty to spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Yeah, it looked like Tony Coates may have made a little tackle down there on the line. Let's take a look. Look at your left guard, 67, right there. Just nice <laughs> tackle. Good form on that one, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Huskies have beaten the Beavers 10 straight, 20 of the last 21. But last year, remember, they were tied 10 10 at half at Corvallis before the Huskies needed some third quarter explosions to get it going. Marcus Tuyas is so smiling now, <laughs> but on the sideline as Brock takes over, second and 12 for the Huskies, and the ball resting at the 13 yard line of Oregon State. Brock back to throw, looking right corner, now looking middle. Man wide open, touchdown, Jurgens, the freshman from Olympia. Beautifully thrown dart in the end zone. Brock Hewitt with a TD. He's the all-time leader here at the University of Washington. A 13-yard hookup for the score. I tell you guys, uh, Brock Hewitt had all kinds of time to throw that football, and it allowed him time to find from the left side. Chris Jurgens lined up coming across the middle. Stephen, you really can't. Uh, you got to get some pressure on Brock Hewitt. Well, you have to. The Beavers put a lot of pressure on people, but they don't do it by bringing bodies uh, defensively they try to keep a free safety sunny and it isn't going to work today the way it looks like Joe Jarzinka adds the extra point and the Huskies have drawn first blood in this homecoming matchup here at Husky Stadium it's Washington 7 at Oregon State nothing we'll be right back in a moment. Well, the Washington Huskies take the early lead 7 0. The hookup from Brock Ewart is 43rd career touchdown pass, his seventh of the year for Chris Jurgens. He is going to be a quality receiver at the university. Jurgens, who remember he was hesitant to even go on the on the first road trip of the year to Arizona. He said he wasn't ready. He said he was nervous. Well, he's come up big. Nine plays, 55 yards to drive for the Huskies. Jurgens with a 13 yard TD reception, his third of the year. He must have been right, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> He's a late bloomer. Uh, yeah. But he picked the right time to come on, given an opportunity because of all the Husky injuries. He's done a wonderful job. Tim Alexander, 35 and a half yards per kickoff return. Dangerous receiver is back. Skursky, the freshman, kicks this high into the air. Is it a pooch kick? We'll see. It floats down to the 35. Wisely, Oregon State will fair catch the football down at the 36. Then the receiver is hammered. Didn't give him enough room to feel the ball, but normally in that situation, Steve, the guy receiving the ball would put his hand up and take a little fair catch action. He didn't do that, whoever it was. Actually, he did get it up. Did I think he? that's I what they're going to call. That was a fair catch. Oregon State has been uh, pooch kicked for the last three weeks. Uh, Alexander is too good. The teams have simply not kicked to him. Oregon State this week has stopped using tight ends to return it, and they've got all kinds Five of running yards, backs. Fair catch, kick catch interference on the kicking team. Five yard penalty, first and ten. Too much white down there, Kevin. I couldn't <laughs> tell with those Husky white pants. <laughs> so Let's the, review the Husky <laughs> touchdown, gentlemen. Take a look at this ball thrown by Brock Ewart. You see him take the well. One thing he's got back this week, Steve, is, is Dane Looker. He's looking to the right, right here, trying to pick up Looker. But watch this. Here's what the teams are starting to do. A little inside-out action on him, delaying him near the line of scrimmage. But as I said earlier, Brock Hewitt had all kinds of time to throw the football. Well, he did, and the Beavers got stuck in a situation they don't want which is to have a linebacker trying to cover a wide receiver. Yeah they had double coverage on Dane Looker that time and Looker playing the position that he was uh, originally intended to play and he obviously had the 11 receptions against Arizona the H back position and which is a explain the difference between playing that flanker and the H back for a receiver. Well, I think Dane Looker's his best attribute guys is his quickness and short short yardage type routes. He is not a guy that's going to go out there and that you have to really fear going deep on you with with all out speed. That is not a Dane Looker receiver. Beaver receivers a tandem left and a duo right.
right. Terrence Bryant, the junior quarterback, with a handoff and a gain maybe of a yard, but stopped at the line of scrimmage. Ken Simonton. Steve Simonton is on his way to becoming one of the all-time greats at Oregon State already as a redshirt freshman with over 700 yards rushing. What do, you, what do you like about his game? Well, he's short. Number one, they can't <laughs> find him. That's right. Uh, they cannot see him behind what is a very big offensive line at Oregon State. He's got great strength in the lower body, changes direction well, got very good speed, but he's deceptive uh, partially because they just can't find him. Now, Steve, also, though, the coaches were telling me, the Huskies, that uh, they like his vision. He's got oh. great vision and able to bounce it outside. Tremendous ability that way. Third and eight, Bryant back to throw. He's flushed out of the pocket. He's got wide open running room up the middle. 40, 35, 30, could go. Nope, upended. Inside the 30 yard line, caught by the back flow of the Huskies. Wide open lane for Terrence Bryant, and he's a guy that can tuck it and go. He didn't have the big yardage numbers on the year, but it's quite obvious he's an athlete. Well, he's a great athlete, and he has not done this enough, Kevin. He has had the opportunity, but he trusts his arms so much that he'll try to drill a ball in. He missed a couple of chances to score on bootlegs because he trusts his arm, and this is a good sign for Oregon State. Well, he had, up until the Stanford game, 170 receptions without interception, a phenomenal number, which is all-time Oregon State, all-time Pac-10. So you can see why he's got such great confidence in his throwing ability. Here's the handoff to Simonton, who picks up some hard-earned yardage across the 25 of the Huskies. 7.08 clock running first quarter Huskies lead the Beavers 7 nothing and the Beavers have some quality people they're very optimistic in Corvallis they're talking about maybe showing up at a bowl this year well that and they're they're getting to the area where they have a lot of su success in that red zone but right there you had Lester Towns low and to Butler coming up uh, the little cornerback giving a pretty good shot <laughs> well Ken Simonton one of the knocks on Ken so far is he's fumbled the ball he's put it on the ground a bunch of times lost six fumbles so far how come your fingers are crossed and your legs are crossed up here Steve <laughs> <laughs> oh man Simonton is upended flipped uh, up into the air and I think it was uh Ken was it Walker, Tuiaia? Right? yeah Mac to actually submarined him and he went up into the air and then Kenny Walker made sure he was secured to the ground this is such an impressive defense. The, the sacks, 26, that's a season, let alone two games. <laughs> yes, it is. Number one in the Pac-10. And the Huskies have protected the quarterback well this year as well. Simonton, four carries, 13 yards today. 6.06 remaining in the first period of play. And Bryant will just keep it. Lean for the needed one or two yards for the first down and needed a yard. He's been very successful at that. He uh, is an athlete. He knows where to put his nose and follow it. And he's gotten most of the first downs that he's tried in that situation. Well, I tell you, if my center was uh, 311 pounds, I think I'd get right on that, too. <laughs> that was a good call, boys. This is a true sophomore center. He played a lot a year ago out of Salem, uh, Mc, uh, Kaiser High School, I believe, and an outstanding wrestler. He's thin at that size and weight, too. Big <laughs> kid. Saw Jonathan Smith, the backup freshman quarterback, a moment ago. Throwing signals to Mike Riley out to Terrence Bryant. Oregon State picks up the first down. Bryant back to throw. Sets. Won't fire. Scrambling left side. Has downfield blocking 10. Driven out of bounds at the seven yard line as Brendan Jones, the redhead, got over there to knock him out of bounds. It's kind of funny. You look at this play, and you had Lester Towns on a man to man, -man coverage. And he ran right, staying with his man. You see on the left-hand side coming up, but Terrence Bryant right here with a good move. There, there goes the linebacker with his man and allowing Bryant outside. Just as good as a block. Well, maybe Oregon State has hit on something here. Bryant has been the man from broken plays to lead them down the field, tucking and running. And the Huskies, let's face it, have been susceptible to that this year. The option quarterback, 521 left in the first quarter. Bryant left side, handoff Simonton. Scooting off left side, nice cut back off the block, leads ahead and in for the touchdown. Simonton makes a sensational cutback off the block to the sideline. He read that beautifully, guys. Sonny, you mentioned this earlier. Ken Simonton has great vision, has a great cutting ability, too. He's done this many times and made a lot of yards by himself, but good blocking. Watch 76, Jason White outside. Now everybody was blocked. Josh Smith, you see losing his balance there, but Simonton, you're right. Nice cutback, well-timed to get in the end zone. The Beavers have an excellent kicking game when you consider that uh, they've got a guy that just absolutely parks the long ball. He kicks it. Joe Cor Jose Cortez 10 of 15 from field goal range this year and he has hit some beauties. 
For example, he's three of four from 50 yards or better. There's Ken Simonton, who comes up with a touchdown. The Beavers trail by one seven six. The Beavers had to use some time to get uh, some folks out on the football field, and the flag now flies as they use too much time. Steve, how can this happen? You know, you guys have been practicing. Uh, <laughs> we just talked about the special teams. There have been several times the last two games, four or five that I can think of, were little mistakes like this. There was an injury I could see that fellow running in at the end as a backup guard, been a starter part time. He was fixing his helmet down here on the sideline, wasn't in the game. Just a mistake, and it's cost him. Luckily, here, five yards shouldn't hurt uh, Jose. Jose Cortez nearly automatic. And he kicks barefoot. He's got the sock on today, though. It's cool. Here's the kick. It's up. It's good. And we're tied at 7 7. So Oregon State and Washington are locked in the tie with 514 left in a fast moving first quarter. We'll be right back in a moment. Seven seven ball game Oregon State and Washington and you know Oregon State wins football games when they don't turn the ball over and they're the least penalized of the two teams on the field Mike Riley's had a terrible time thus far this this year with the penalties. Ken Simonton accounts for the score for Oregon State. As Oregon State was able to put the ball on the on the field and run it up the the distance of the field with Terrence Bryant doing a great deal of the work from the quarterback position. Well, interestingly enough, last week the Beavers started out the same way but dropped the ball twice in the first two series, costing him drives. Jose Cortez will kick and Turi Butler will receive the ball, straddling his own five, cuts to the near side 20, turns the corner 25, trying to cut back, shoestring tripped up at the 30-yard line. Good return for Mr. Butler, a return of 27 yards. Great hang time on that kickoff, though. I uh, th that was a great job by the Oregon State kicker Cortez that time. Tremendous hang time and good coverage downfield, Steve. Very good coverage team. Cortez put so many of them in the end zone that special teams coach Bruce Reed gets worried because his team doesn't get to practice it very often. <laughs> they had been two full games with about eight or nine kickoffs without a coverage three weeks ago and then won a football game at Stanford by covering and knocking the ball loose in the end zone. Huskies bring it at. They scored in their first possession of the afternoon. You are rolling out passing on the move. And the pass complete to Dane Looker, his ex high school teammate at Puyallup, a pickup of about five yards on the connection. That throw right there, Steve. Now, if you just separate your shoulder a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. that ball had a little bit of snap on it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> huh? He has got a great delivery, doesn't he? Wonderful delivery. Second and five for the Huskies. Ewers the starting quarterback this afternoon to play action. Jason Harris. Flags fly. Free play. Harris right side at the, the 40 yard line. Dragged down. And an exchange of pleasantries after the play over there as Jason Harris locks in with Armin Hatcher. Hatcher coming up for the tackle. Offsides on the defense. Five yard penalty. First and ten. Offsides on Oregon State. Mike Riley doesn't like what he's seen so far in terms of the penalties because it's cost him this year. Really makes it tough to sustain anything when you have a fumble penalty drop ball, you know, like we did against Arizona. That's the most disappointing thing that happened in that game for me is that we allowed those things to happen and and I don't think they controlled them as much as we made those mistakes. Turnovers have cost him. OSU has lost all three times. It's been on the negative side in turnovers against Arizona. They fumbled it away four times in the football game. Lost it 28 to 7 last weekend. You were back to throw. Steps, pumps, long ball outside. Desishore hooks up, makes the catch at the 20, flags all over the place. Desishore was grabbed along the near sideline when the ball was in midair. He still was able to make the catch. Ricky Walker hold him down to pick up a 40. On the play. Ricky Look. Walker, uh, a starting running back for the Beavers last year. A good idea of the depth change you see here. He's a pretty good man to man cover guy. 
got beaten there. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a young man right here. Andre Deschisher has the speed, Steve. He came out of Los Angeles with a lot of records down there in the inner city uh, track meets. And right there, you got to watch out for this guy. You may not have Jawarn Hooker out there, but but that young man and Ricky Walker has going to have his hands full most of the day. And you said it earlier, too. When Brock Hewitt has time like that, the Beavers are in trouble. Gerald Harris, Desassure, and Looker all wide to the right side. Jason Harris is the lone back. Huskies now first and ten. And play action, the handoff going Ooh. off the right side. And that's what Jim Lambright was talking about this week. The line has got to sustain their blocks, and the running backs have got to do a better job of continuing their surge, staying on their feet, and pressing ahead for two, three, four extra yards as Harris picked up that time. Well, a running back is dead in the water if they don't keep those legs moving. You got to keep them pounding right there. A little spin move. Got a little help from <laughs> everybody in there. <laughs> that helps a little bit, Steve. It does. 342 left in the first quarter and the Huskies and Beavers tied at 7-7 with Sonny Six Killer and Steve Priest, Kevin Calabro alongside Ewer to the handoff left side. Harris gallops across the 10 yard line and once again the Huskies inside the red zone go right between those hash marks with just good old fashioned football. Aaron Wells with a tackle for the Beavers. Let's take a look at Jason Harris here. We talked about the vision on the other side of the ball. Let's see if Jason Harris, his head is up. He is looking for a hole to run in. But I thought it was a great play on the inside by Aaron Wells to, to get an arm on him. Well, it certainly is. But you think of Aaron's size, 243 pounds, Sonny. <laughs> well, he showed some quickness. Then. <laughs> he did. Yike. The offset, Harris in the backfield. Big handoff, Ewart rolls, quick snap throw to the five yard line. It's Joe Terzica. Mojo is rising that time as he came off his feet with a fingertip control. He's hauled down at the three yard line. Well, you know, when you run the ball and, you, and the Huskies have come out and tried to get that established today, you can get some play action going and open up those little H back receivers. Steve, when you're on the inside, it doesn't take much of a fake right here, although the ball was delivered a little high. Joe did go up and get the football. Well, that fake just brings the defensive end, in this case, Brechterfield, out of the play just enough to give Hewitt the time to complete it. Nice catch. Brock Hewitt has been sharp, 5 for 5, 88 yards in the TD this afternoon. The link up to Chris Jurgens. It's caught up in the backfield, and they tighten up both sides. They've got everybody up on the line trying to wedge block, and Conop is stacked up at the three. You know, this week in practice, Kevin, Steve, they were working on this power formation because they haven't had the surge inside the five yard line or, or first and goal. So that time you had Conop, and uh, I couldn't quite get the number, but they have two guys off the special teams because the guys on the wedge, mm -hmm. they learned how to surge inside. It looked like a single wing. Uh, it did, exactly. Me, you may not remember that a little bit before your time, but I, it did look like <laughs> a single wing to me. <laughs> Dawson, I think, might have been one of the extra people out there, Sonny, you referred to. Here is Ewart back to throw. Man wide open down the far side in his Desishur. He was flanked out there, and nobody saw him. There wasn't a beaver in sight, but there's a flag out at the five-yard line. Did he line up offsides? That's my first question. That was like the old lonely end you used to yes. see. I don't think he came out of the huddle, did he, Sonny? I, I didn't quite notice that, but the... What happened to the Huskies a few years ago against Notre Dame? A DB got uh, a little confused, looked back towards the huddle, and forgot about the guy on the outside. See who's at fault here. No touchdown. Unsportsmanlike penalty. The, the substitute never came within the nine uh. yard mark, therefore, was ineligible to catch the pass. So it was a long way in. The 15 yard penalty, the spotted foul, the, the feet third down. In other words, he didn't come out close enough to the huddle. Right. Somebody's pointing. You see it right there. The, the corner on the right side has realized that he doesn't have anybody and somebody's missing. Well, the official called that right away, so there wasn't, it wasn't a late call on that one. There's, there's a guy I wouldn't want to back to, go back to the sideline and tell him I didn't make it nine yards out on the field. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Landbright in his sixth year as the head coach of the Huskies. Now to third and 18 situation. Well, let's see what they sent in for Brock Ewart. Brock back to throw. Five step drop sets. Reichel's a pass in the end zone. There's a man hauled down in the end zone. Gerald Harris was pulled down before the ball got there. That's interference. Ricky Walker once again victimized 
by a Husky receiver. Well, you know, Oregon State's a little shorthanded. Uh, their free safety, Terrence Carroll, is out with an injury, Steve, so they've had to reshuffle some things back there. Well, they've shuffled people around. Oregon State. Defense on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. First and goal. Oregon State has also uh, lost some people that are ineligible for academics. Take a look here. He's pretty well covered. Just get the right hand off, and you're you've got a good defensive play. It's it's taking it to the next level, isn't it, Steve? I mean, as a defensive back, you're in position. You see Mike Riley there, a little disappointed, but there's just those little things. You know, you go over in practice, and, and all of a sudden you think you can get away with it, and you cannot out here with these guys with the yellow flag. Well, absolutely, and, and particularly when you lose a leader like Terrence Carroll, a big play guy. First down and three. And at the three, with Jackson pushing and shoving. After the whistle, the uh, Huskies are able to grind it up to about the one-yard line. Looks like Reggie Davis and Micah Moore down here, guys. <laughs> Just a little, uh, you know, competitiveness down there. <laughs> Micah Moore is a smallish linebacker, but just has great speed. Plays the strong side linebacker position in a backup position, but plays a lot. Runs uh, four fives, can get all over the field, but certainly gives it away at just over 200 pounds. Second and goal to go for the Huskies. Ball at the two. Split backfield. Ewart rolling out behind the block, looking to throw on the move. Throws it out of the end zone. He was knocked down, but quickly picks himself up. That's a tough throw down on the near sideline. You're running out of room. You're getting short into the field. You don't have distance to work with. And there must have been three Beavers in coverage down there, Steve. I mean, there was no place to go. And Brock Hewitt got hurt on a play like that earlier this season. Got dinged up a little bit. You like to kind of see, well, you see Marcus Tuyasasoko coming in. What a, what a talent Hewitt is. I mean, when things do go bad, he knows where to throw it. Marcus Tuyas is has run for five touchdowns already this year. He's lined up in the H-back position. Here at the quarterback, the handoff to Tui, trying to go left side. Big hit in the backfield, bubbles the ball. Oregon State recovers, but a flag on the play. So there will be a lot to sort out on this play. But a nice stop turned in by the Beavers linebacker down there. Jonathan Jackson got him in the backfield. On the offense, penalty declined. First and ten. Penalty was, declined on Washington, and Oregon State takes possession of the football. That's a big stop right there. That was the option, wasn't it? Wasn't uh, he going to come out and run the option? Yes, that's, that's correct. See right here with Tui coming out, just a great play on the inside. Absolutely. And Marcus, with the, you lose that mesh with your tailback, it's all over. You got to keep the ball. And Brian Jones with a big tackle and causing a big fumble. Well, Brian Jones has had a remarkable year. Leads the Beavers in tackles this year. He's a kid with great range, 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 hurdler in high school. Runs 4'5", can create a lot of problems with his speed. But Jones with a stop, but Jackson with the recovery of the fumble. Oregon State takes up Bryant to Simonton. Trying to cross left to right out of the backfield. He has wrestled. Motion stopped at about the four-yard line. That's the third first down in a row that the Beavers have run the ball. The first three at the start of the game, they passed the ball on first down. Interesting statistic and how the Beavers have changed uh, what they're doing just in the first six series. Jabari Issa stacks up the freshman Ken Simonton at the line of scrimmage. 7-7 seven, seven score with 10 seconds ticking down here to close the first quarter of play. And Oregon State will just let the quarter end. So the Beavers and Huskies tied at 7-7. It was Washington scoring first on their first possession of the afternoon. And Brock Hewitt was sharp in his first start in two weekends with the link up to Chris Jurgens for the touchdown. His third of the year. And for Brock Hewitt, his 43rd of his career. We'll be right back with more action from Husky Stadium in a moment.
Welcome back to Husky Stadium 1350 to go here in the second quarter it's homecoming and the Huskies have dominated Oregon State I think that's safe to say they won 10 straight 20 of the last 21 but this is not your father's beaver team <laughs> this is uh, they're trying to turn the corner Mike Riley with seven wins in his second year with Oregon State you were back to throw fake handoff throwing deep down the middle this is sure makes a tremendous catch it's going to stick for the touchdown. Andre Desichaux in traffic with a touchdown. A little dance afterward that might have cost him a penalty. Let's don't take the fun out of the game. I know that's. Yeah, I can see it if you go taunt the crowd or run around with your helmet off. But this kid has worked so hard in practice, guys. He, Coach Lambright, is real proud of how he's stuck into the program, worked his tail off in practice in hopes of getting a reception like this for a touchdown. As a senior, Steve. A couple little jig steps. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with that. There was nothing there. I and mean, that, that is, a, my opinion, a silly rule. You got to have some fun in this game. Yeah, that's uh, Kevin. You absolutely hit it on the head, though. I mean, <laughs> there's got to be a point. Don't take the fun out of the game. Well, well remember last weekend when Jarzinka ran the touchdown, uh, the Panther the went, went down to the fence and was wolfing to the crowd. There's got to be some consistency, and I, I think you, you've got to show a little more judgment there. That was a quick flag. Now Joe is backed up to his 25 a boot of 35 it's up it looks like it's deep enough is it between the pins it is the extra point added by Joe Jarzicka who's had field goals <laughs> this year of 20 and 35 so Mojo adds the extra point of the Huskies lead 14 to 7 on a 40 yard bomb from Ewart to Jesse sure we'll be right back in a moment. Brock Ewart has been sharp this afternoon, returning as the starter, coming off the separated shoulder back on October the 36th for eight this afternoon. 128 yards and is thrown for two TDs. And this one was a beauty to Andre Desichur this weekend, this afternoon, has two catches for 80 yards in total and a TD. He can throw all the passes, can't he, Sonny? Yes, he, he can. He dropped that one in. Perfect touch. Good look at the quarterback. Little play action, but again, they've been running the football a little bit. Again, that will affect the safety, how they see the play, Steve. And right here, you see that he did get behind Armin Hatcher, uh, the strong side safety. The Beavers running there, what appeared to be a, a weak side zone, bringing the strong safety back to the middle to help out. Didn't do him much good in that situation. Greg Ainsworth, the senior, will take the kickoff, and he is hammered. I mean hammered just across the 15 yard line Curtis Williams just waiting for his opportunity sneaks up out of the weeds and plastered him. Oregon State football first and 10 the ball resting at the 16 yard line the backup Jonathan Miller rolling out right side throwing back here across the middle to the 26 yard line Greg Ainsworth with the catch. Well, that was Jonathan Smith. He is the backup. He came in last week. First real uh, opportunity when Terrence Bryant got hurt. He's a red shirt uh, freshman. He's a walk on. He's done a very good job so far against a very tough situation against Arizona last week. Giving Terrence Bryant a blow because of his injury last week. He isn't hurt today. You know Mike Riley told me that also more than just the injury. This has settled Terrence Bryant down. He felt comfortable today bringing in Smith early. Smith the freshman back to throw. Throws a bullet to the 35 yard line, but that's just a pickup of a few yards there. Roddy Tompkins makes the catch. Want to meet Davis, the youngster down there, making the stop. Now, Steve, will they roll Jonathan Smith out? Because being 5'10, and as Kevin pointed out earlier, they have a huge offensive line in height. 
Will he stick in the pocket or will they roll him out? They'll do both. He has a very good athletic mind. He will find holes from a straight drop back position. But yes, they will get him outside on a bootleg. I'm off the Simonton uh, running game that they have. Huskies have been tough up front with the 26 sacks. Their linebackers have been bolstered by Lester Hounds continued good health. Lester Towns here's Smith throwing right side skidding and sliding in there for a nice catch at the 39 yard line is Tim Alexander. And the Huskies this weekend figure to throw a different wrinkle at Oregon State. As you can see on that play, they're playing up on the line. They're bumping receivers as they come out of the backfield. They're susceptible maybe to the deep ball, but they're a little tougher around the football, as Jim Lambright expressed earlier this week. Probably the most important change in our defense has been the fact that we've started to attack more. We feel real good about uh, our defense having some fundamentals now that uh, can allow us to uh, man up in coverage and then kind of cheat uh, our front enough to stop the run and to get after quarterbacks. And there's a prime example of getting beat on the deep ball because you're playing a little bit tighter on the front line but Kenny Walker did a nice job to cover the tight end Martin Maurer who dropped the football. Well that was a great opportunity for Oregon State right there. Maurer has made some big catches for the Beavers so far this season as Steve knows but that time he should have had that ball Steve tight end down the middle the last two weeks the Beavers have dropped four passes that all would have changed the, changed the complexion of the football game. Marty has very very good hands. He's a true sophomore will catch a lot of balls at Oregon State but they need those plays. Robert Prescott one of the tandem receivers wide to the near side out of Seattle Jonathan Smith back to throw wheels at left side Simonton with the swing pass catch but brought down from behind at his own 45 yard line. Jabari Issa. Jabari Issa recognizing the play right away and running out there now for a big guy this guy could motor you watch number 95 here guys he sees it right there he knows what's going on and he just turns on the motor of course Simonton cutting back helps the play a little bit for him to make the tackle. Nice to have speed like that out of that size too. Wow. Third and four 1122 left in the second quarter the Huskies lead Oregon State 14 to seven. Two out of four Oregon State converting a third down situation. Smith the freshman. Hard rush left side rolls up nice pass over the middle big gainer 35 down to the 30 inside the 30 yard line goes Tim Alexander Jonathan Smith just reacted beautifully as Nigel Burton came in there with a blitz off his right side but being a right hander Burton came in on the side that the quarterback's better able to see if you're a right hander. That's absolutely right. You know you got to get after the quarterback here you see the rush from the right side. Good job right there by Smith again wide open in the middle Steve and be able to pick up a guy like Alexander my God if I was a quarterback my eyes would get pretty big too. <laughs> what do you mean if you were a quarterback. Well. <laughs> that a young is, one a young one. <laughs> that's a fine football player right there Tim Alexander. 14 to 7 Washington 10 44 to go first half Smith back tosses a pass. Here's a post pass overthrown. Man was out there wanting to meet Davis in coverage. Right with James Battle stride for stride and Smith wisely just threw it away. Well, Oregon State, James Battle, I was looking at their averages for wide receivers. He averages nearly 16 yards of reception, Steve, so I can see why Smith would like to hunt him down. Well, he's big. He's 6'3, got great speed. He's been nicked up by both years at Oregon State University, but probably the, the biggest problem with this passing offense so far this year is what you mentioned. The average per throw it isn't down the field enough it's 10 yards or less. Second down and 10 ball at the 27. Here's the handoff to Simonton little juke pick trying to bounce outside Kent. Knocked out of bounds by Turi Butler down there at about the 27 yard line a gain maybe of one. Well that's one yard I didn't think he was going to gain anything <laughs> and it just shows Simonton's ability to bust it. The guy is hard to see as we mentioned he's only he's, he's safe by seven and we don't know if it's really five seven but he's hard to see but that time Trey Butler staying home and making the play. Well, the quarterbacks listed at five ten so that makes it five seven. OK. <laughs> you look at him side by side. Simonton from Pittsburgh California. Ten and a half minutes remaining. First half Smith quick drop looks over the middle slams a pass in and out of the hands of his intended receiver Tim Alexander actually Craig Ainsworth Craig Ainsworth the intended receiver and Smith threw a bullet that time figuring he had to 
throw it through traffic. Some very catchable balls that should have been caught today. Four times already there are plays to be made by a receiver for Oregon State. They just have to come through in order for the Beavers to be successful. Nice, nice first series for Jonathan Smith, I think. Yep. Excellent. Moving the ball around, good throws. Five of eight, 56 yards, and as long as the 27 yard hookup. Now the boot blocked, and it comes right back to the holder of Oregon State. He's uh, overwhelmed at the Husky 38 yard line. So Jose Cortez has the intended field goal kick in one block last weekend. He was three for four, however. And the Huskies' coverage that time was excellent. They bust through the middle. Take a keep your eye on number 95, Jabari Issa again. Looks to me right up the gut. He's able to come free and the surge right there, Steve. He got three or four yards on the initial surge and, and looked like Keith Domenico, the center, couldn't uh, adjust here. Well, Di Domenico moves to guard in that situation, and the Beavers were very worried about that, Sonny. Bjorn swings it out to the right side to the freshman Willie Hurst. He is driven down, shy of the 35 yard line. Oregon State's coaches thought that was a very, very strong point in the uh, special teams of the Huskies that the blocking ability because of the strength of the defensive line and the penetration they, they get. Simon's in. <laughs> Just give me the ball. Okay. Give me the ball. Let's change that play a little bit. Move it outside. <laughs> Huskies set up second and 12, leading 14 to 7. Ewan has been sharp this afternoon. Long count back to throw. Angling it left side. There's a man open on the flat. Desher with the catch. That is a long pass. For that quarterback to make out there a yard shy at the first down the market right at the 45 he nearly threw the width of the field that time Sonny I was going to say when you're on this near hash mark and throwing to the far side of the field that looked like a hang time on a punt <laughs> <laughs> Long throw. right there nice break crisp break float a little bit at the end but a good job right here the reason that's successful is Brock Hewitt threw it so the receiver had to come back to the ball Andre Holland with the stop Best afternoon I've seen Andre Desichere have in uh, the two years I've been with the Huskies covering on the television side. He dropped a pass, remember, and it would have been a TD for Marcus Tuyas and Sopo in the Utah State game. It was a runaway game at that point, but you know he'd like to make amends. Pat Conniff leans ahead for the first down, and Washington is again on the move, leading 14 to 7. Inoki Brechterfield with the stop. Well, you know, you go back to that, Kevin. It's a Desichere has worked so hard the coaches are real proud of the way he's hung in there and worked hard but it's it's just amazing how that confidence grows when you're forced to play and you actually come to the to the table uh, although he dropped that big pass but he's still gotten better and better we haven't called Brechterfield's name much this afternoon 17 and a half career sacks and he's kind of the stud up front for Oregon State Washington's line has done an excellent job. Ewart throws left side. Man, did he take a lick though? Pass complete at about the line of scrimmage to Chris Jurgens in a game maybe of a uh, half yard on the play. I know that Elliot Silver's coming in the ball game had a big chore, Steve, and that is blocking one on one with Brechterfield and and having your big quarterback back in the game and Brock Heward. I'm sure Elliot Silver is feeling pretty good about himself right now. Well, no question. I noticed that the Huskies have taken the uh, running back to that side to protect him on sure passing downs but the the uh, tackle and it's either side because Brechterfield moves around has done an excellent job so far second and nine now for Washington Huskies lead 14 7 you were the play action he gives to Willie Hurst Hurst is submarine by his own man a fallen offensive lineman trips up Willie Hurst was it that fell down there? Steve, could that have been somebody we were just talking about? <laughs> this guy right here, 56. This is very difficult. He will go straight down. You see him. Now watch this move. He goes down, creates havoc, makes the play. It just is yep. astonishing to me what he does. He was a nose guard as a true freshman at Oregon State and started at about 230 pounds. That and the, or, the Huskies could have been called for holding. It looked like uh, Chad Ward grabbed him by the head. Great play by Brechter. Third and 11 now, passing down. Ewart back to throw up on the tiptoes. Flings a pass out here to the near side. Gerald Harris, got to go north south. Kind of went back a little bit after making the catch, but uh, he is hammered down there at the 46. 
He bounces up, appears to be all right, and if he is okay after that shot, we can pronounce him fully healthy because Jonathan Jackson just teed him up. <laughs> well, there goes Harris under his own power. Watch this lick. Let's look at uh, Reggie Davis. Reggie Davis probably doing a great job and help with Aaron Dalen, but Reggie Davis has the quickness to stay with Brechterfield on those moves, whereas a big tackle would need a little bit of help. I think you're right. I think that's a very good move, a uh, good strategy by the Huskies. Fleming has done an excellent job this year. He scoops this one hopper. He leans and pops this one out off the toe. Look at the skid it takes down to the 15 yard line. And Oregon State will have the football down at about the 28. A flag flies down there. Might have been a late hit. As Oregon State was driven out of bounds. Down there was Tim Alexander making a catch. Ryan Fleming did an excellent job to field the low snap, one hop it, and then. Uh, Measure the oncoming rush and snake that kick around the oncoming rusher. That's twice this year he's done that, Kevin. And on this play, Oregon State again hurt by a penalty. Pretty good return on that kick, but I think they got a block from behind. Illegal block in the back on the return team. During the return, 10 yard penalty, first and 10. Tim Alexander has just started returning punts the last two or three weeks. As you look at this, Braithwaite has a good shot at him here. Obviously, it isn't a penalty because the ball hit the ground. Good See, call. Yep. Right here, coming up from behind, Micah Moore, 27 from the Beavers. And, boy, I tell you what, you, you think that <laughs> let him go because Tim Alexander had already reached, he was beyond that point, Steve. Well, it's too late in the season for those kind of mistakes, especially Micah is a guy who knows how to play football. He's played, and played a lot for three seasons. Jonathan Smith, the promising freshman quarterback, will stay on this time. Hands off to Simons, and a man he is roped up by Mac Tuiaea and dragged down. Nice tackle by Big Mac up front. Big Mac using his big presence in the middle up there. Ken Simonton will look over and see number 78. I don't want to see you much this afternoon. But this is great stuff right here, Steve. Oh, absolutely. 96 yards. He was over 100. Uh, until about two games ago. He's just played super. He's got a fourth hundred yard game. Really was at 99. Uh, lots was over 100 and lost it back and had a 200 yard game earlier in the year. That's quite impressive. That's a lot of yards. Smith now back to throw angling a pass to the far sideline. A man is under it trying to haul it down with one hand. Looked like there was contact made down there. And the official who was on the sideline does not make the call, but wow. he, I don't think, had a good perspective of the call. He was standing down there on the Washington bench. The official that was downfield in the middle of the field makes the call, and I think it was a good one. It looked like there was some contact made while the ball was in the air. James Battle, the intended receiver. That was right in front of Jim Lambright on the Washington bench. I think we have to look at the contact and how. Yeah. Hold on. Pass interference on the defense, grabbing the arm. Automatic first down. Jerry Butler, the penalized individual. Take a look. What? I, I I don't know about that one. Uh, he did have contact with his the receiver's left arm right here. Yep. There it is. Yeah, that's contact. And I can see right there where the side judge was blocked. Yeah, he could with the Oregon State exactly. body. That's good officiating right there. 32-yard line for Oregon State now. First and ten with five and a half minutes to go in the first half. And the Huskies lead 14 to 7. Smith has been effective. 5 10 rolling out left, throwing on the move. A jump pass complete. Holy cow. A little Lou Jack jump pass at the 43 yard line. Tim Alexander with a catch. Well, Sonny, you know as well as I do that a lot of times that kind of pass is more effective than a perfect pass. Jonathan Smith does that extremely well. He scored last week just putting the ball up in the air. In fact, sometimes Terrence Bryant has too strong an arm and can't do that with the ball. But this guy knows where people are and throws that on purpose. Well, the Oregon State offensive line should be credited also because Young Smith is having some time to throw the football. Huskies are not applying enough pressure on him, and, and you're right about that. Good job by Alexander. Smith now, I guess, throwing on the run. He throws it over the middle. There was nobody down there wearing the black and orange and white of Oregon State. Plenty of Huskies around it though and Jones had it thrown right at him. He dropped it. Pretty cool cool customer for a redshirt freshman seeing only his second real playing uh, time. 
true walk on oregon state founding recruiting uh, one of his teammates two years ago <laughs> kid named dustin jans who's, who played a lot as a true freshman last year and is injured this year but they were watching film and found this young guy and said come aboard he's paying his own way won't be for long 14 to 7 the huskies <laughs> lead here smith with a handoff up the middle simonton trying to get the hard earned yards on the ground grinds ahead for two maybe three jabari isa with the stop and he's joined in there by Josh Smith. Coach Conklin, Terry Conklin, coming back to the program this year, Steve. He's got that great NFL experience. He paid his time doing a grad assistant work here with the UW and got hired as receivers coach. And Coach Lambright's real happy with the way he's worked with these young quarterbacks and receivers. Brings a, lot of I, brings a lot of ideas over from the Redskins where he played for Joe Gibbs, who's quite an innovator. A wide open passing scheme. Smith back to throw. Swings it out left side. That ball was tipped. Up for grabs. Flag on the play on this third and seven deal for Oregon State. And Matt Tuiaia in the vicinity creating some interference. Josh Smith as well. Let's see. Not sure who got their hand on the ball. Was it Tuiaia? No, it was Smith. Yeah, it looked like Josh Smith on the near side, the right defensive end. There's no flag. The ball was tipped. Therefore, because the ball hit the eligible lineman. Not a penalty. Well, I tell you what, though, Steve, this play was set up perfectly. If he'd have gotten the ball out to the outside right here, perhaps this is that 5'10 height again going against the defensive end at 6'4, 6'4 and a half. Exactly. No question about it. There was a big play there if the Beavers make it. A little lob pass. He needs to lob that ball over the defender. But again, Josh Smith being there with the big paw. Let's see who's punting this time for the Beavers. Looks like Jose Cortez again. He's not the normal punter, but he kicks the ball real high and real quick. As he did the last time, he sent a missile straight up, and he does this time. He's going to angle it. Jarzinka down. What's this? It can't be Joe signaling the fair catch. It's Tory Butler. <laughs> <laughs> Butler was back there. He signals the fair catch. That's your first tip off that Joe is not back there to make the catch. We'll take a break. The Huskies will take over on the touchback at the 20. Joe says no touchbacks to Ray. 14-7 Huskies lead with 4.06 left here in the second period. We'll return in a moment. State elects to go with Jose Cortez to punt the football away. It'll hang a high one, Jarzeka 30. Oh, it came down off the knee. The ball ripped away, but Joe on the turf was able to gather it in and smother it with a 111 left. That could have been a disaster. That had given Oregon State the football with a minute left at the 30 yard line of Washington, but Joe was able to bring it back home. Well, you know, he never calls for a fair catch, and right here, he actually had an opportunity to field it cleanly, just took his eyes off it. And fortunately for him, and unfortunately for the Beavers, uh, he was able to get that back. That's why Cortez is punting. It's just to get the ball way up in the air. Uh, the other punter, the normal punter, Mike Sess, was a little bit inconsistent that way. Husky's hungry. Good looking Husky dog. Here's Ewart back to throw now. Good. Shot. Throw outside to Hurst. He's trying to jitterbug out of the backfield and gets nowhere. Uh, that's at about uh, the 27 yard line. He's brought down. First delayed and blocked in the backfield and bounced outside, but Oregon State covered it beautifully. Now Washington quickly. They don't huddle, they mass at the line. Europe will mark signals there with 49 seconds remaining in the first half. Brock's going to take a five step drop and look. He'll angle the pass near sideline. Jesse Shearer there, reaching out for the grab. Out of bounds at the 39. Nope, caught it in bounds. But rolled out, clock stops with 40 seconds left, and the Huskies have it now. Oregon State's 41. What a catch by Andre. Great catch, great throw, but again, that time Aaron Wright, who just had made the interception, did not get over in coverage in time, Steve. This is something with that ball in the air like that. He's got to be able to break to the football and, and offer some help for the cornerback. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. It looked like a two deep, and he has to get there. Cornerback uh, Ricky Walker looked like he got a fairly good pop on the receiver, but the safety just doesn't get the right play. Andre, you can see him dropping back in coverage right there. Andre Dessischer 
making sure he made that grab and he's having a career day <laughs> but, <you> know, <laughs> 124 yards with a TD I'll tell you the, the cornerback has to get a better shot right has that's a tough play for right to get there and now that you see the cornerbacks uh, uh, effort on the receiver he didn't get a pop enough to get the uh, safety over there where he should be I say that as a former safety yeah no I, I see <laughs> you're protecting that position <laughs> Brock had the usual tight spiral on that ball, unlike the one that he threw for the interception a moment ago that wobbled. Well, normally the safeties are lined up in, a, in that kind of coverage. They will stay. You see the numbers on the field and the hash marks, Kevin, and that's kind of their guide where they're going to maintain themselves so they don't get beat deep down the middle. And this is a good call, perhaps by the Huskies, seeing something by that Oregon State defense. Well, it's not a defense normally that Oregon State plays. They don't play a lot of too deep. They play more man to man with a free safety, but with the free safety change, you got to change it a little bit. That's right. It makes a difference. First and 10 for Washington, and the ball resting at Oregon State's 41. Gerald Harris, wide right, Desishur and Looker, wide left. First, the man in the backfield. Here's the throw near sideline. The completion, and Gerald Harris driven out of bounds. He got off his feet again that time, but makes the catch. And they'll have it now at Oregon State's. 34 yard line. Ricky Walker in coverage makes the stop for the Beavers. 35 seconds left now. I know one thing that the Huskies are not throwing towards Andre Holland, who covers the wide side of the field. Most of the throws have been going to the near side against Ricky Ricky Walker, number four. Well, there you see the guy that's a four year starter and a heck of a football player. He is wide side, so he's got the tough cover. Normally just lines up inside and plays man to man. Husky second and third. Ewart, happy feet, throwing right side. Just as sure with the catch, but he's held inbounds, and the clock continues to roll. Andre thought had enough room there to scamper out of bounds, but he didn't. Well, Brian Jones with a good wrap-up down there. Husky first down. That's why they stopped the clock here with 22 seconds left. I think Andre brought that to their attention. <laughs> Good play by Andre. Got reversed. It. Well, the Huskies will have triple receivers left. Ewart has been outstanding. 15 for 19, 200 yards, even now, and two TDs. And he's got Davis playing wide left side, and he will just come back and spike the ball to stop the clock with 18 seconds left. Yeah, they've got one timeout remaining. They want to hang on to that, get down to that field goal situation, make a couple opportunities here toward the end zone, spread that thing out. And I think if I was a Husky coaching staff right now, I'd challenge Andre Zescher and Ricky Walker here on the near side, or have Ricky Walker challenged by Andre. I think you're right. That seems like the wise thing. I, I look for the Beavers to try to cover up and help out by bringing their safeties and giving inside help uh, to those cornerbacks. We've got Davis now at the tight end on the right side. Hurst is stacked up, offset on the right. You were back to throw. Hard rush. He's got one on one on coverage. He throws over the middle on the run. Touchdown! He held the ball. What a catch! Andre Desishore with a tremendous catch. Two TDs on the afternoon. Gentlemen, you called it a 30 yard hookup. And how about the job that Brock Ewart did scrambling? He was able to become aware, stay aware of the line of scrimmage on the run and made the throw. I tell you, Aaron Wright, I believe number eight, made a tragic decision. He saw Brock Ewart come out of the pocket, moved up in there, and Andre Desishire absolutely had Ricky Walker beat all the way, Steve. No question. When you're supposed to be short or deep in that middle, you got to stay there. Jarzinka adds the extra point, and the Huskies score, getting the football back. With a minute left, they roll down the field and make it 21 to 7. A big score there for Washington. Ten seconds left in the first half, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Husky Stadium. The Huskies leading Oregon State 21 to 7. Ture Butler 
receives the kickoff to start the second half angling up to midfield he's across midfield inside Aaron, Oregon State Territory down at the 47 yard line to Ray Butler with a tremendous return gets the Huskies excellent field position a return of 50 yards looked like it was set up to the near side he broke it back that way Steve and if it hadn't been for Cortez down here I think coming in on the tackle it's actually Brandon Boyce Brandon Boyce end. 17 but what you saw was a, a contained man on the outside who had a shot but went to, went for the tackle instead of keeping him inside shoulder Brock Hewitt outstanding in the first half was 16 to 21 here's the handoff to the right side the Huskies continue to go to the ground good balance by the Huskies 17 carries 38 yards first half Washington was 16 of 21 Brock had three touchdowns two of them to Andre Desassure. And this one was a beauty. You know, Andre hadn't caught a touchdown pass since his freshman year. That was his third career touchdown reception. Here is his fourth. Desassure, six catches, 156 yards, two TDs, the longest of the afternoon, a 40 yard bomb. The Huskies on the ground, 230 yards thus far. But they continue to establish a ground game or a try to. Pat Connett with the carry up the middle. Fumble the football, but I believe it was a dead ball after he had gained a couple on the play. And Noki Brechterfield with the stop on Pat Conniff, who's already had his bouts with injuries this year, and it appears to be his right knee is bothering him again. You can see him heavily taped and wrapped up. Lots of injuries today, both sides. If you look at those statistics in the first half, Oregon State offensively, actually 180 yards, pretty balanced. You think, hey, things could be going well, but this Washington passing attack has been awesome. Marcus Tuyasusopo now will jump in at quarterback. They'll send Brock Hewitt out in the slot as they exchange positions. He's going to option right side and keep it. Angling up, bounces outside 30. He's gone. 15, 10, 5. He's in. Marcus Tuyasusopo. For the option touchdown. Take a look. Flags on the play down at the 10. Some Huskies down there trying to lobby the officials. Guess here is an illegal downfield block. We'll see. He knows how to run the option, doesn't he? Yes, he, he does. does. <laughs> well, my feeling, unless you know something I don't, Sonny. The only play is a touchdown. After the score, dead ball, personal foul on the offense. 15 yards enforced on the try. But the touchdown will count. Husky lead 27. They get 27 to 7. Great run right here, right there in the little crease. Everybody had gone outside for the pitch guy, Steve. And Marcus Tuyasopo, with his quickness and speed, doesn't need a lot of room. And right there, you can see why. A good, quick first move up the field beats Oregon State's middle linebacker. All over right there. 41 yards for the touchdown, his sixth of the season. Marcus Tuyasopo. No quarterback in controversy. I like the way Lambright handled the whole situation. You don't lose a position, particularly when everything is predicated on your play. Here's the kick by Jarzinka. The extra point added from the 25. He's done it twice this afternoon. Penalized after the touchdown. Heisky is twice this afternoon, but moved back. And Joe's had to hit a 35 yard point after. And he nailed this one to make it 28 to 7. We'll be back. 318 remaining in the third at Husky Stadium here in a moment. in all his glory. 
Captain Husky. <laughs> I think he's had too many bratwurst. Hey, Kevin, think about another career. <laughs> oh, man. Greg Ainsworth is back with Tim Alexander to receive now for Oregon State and the Huskies set up by the tremendous return of Terry Butler uh, across midfield a 50 yard kickoff return at the 49 strike quickly on the option Marcus to yes great play calling by the Huskies and I'm talking about Jim Lambright's decision is go with Rock Hewitt, make the decision on Monday no questions asked no quarterback controversy and yet integrate the talents of Marcus to yes well, two things on that one is Marcus to yes understands the situation he's a yeah. team player number two Lambright Marcus Julius Sopo in his mind deserves every opportunity to play and get in the ball game. Here's the kick and a beauty by Skirsky taken back in the end zone by Ainsworth. Confidence builder for Jim Skirsky who has had his troubles this year but he continues to really bang that football. Terrence Bryant is back in the ball game with a stiff back not great numbers the first half and uh, I thought he was stiffening up a bit, but looks like he's going to try to play. Lefty back to throw, angles a pass near side, nearly intercepted. Man, it was in the hands of Mighty Mouse, Nigel Burton, who's hopping mad that he couldn't contain that ball. Ainsworth, the intended receiver, along the near sideline. Boy, Coach Riley must feel that he has to have him in the ball game. Stiff back and all, you cannot make a living throwing these type of passes with three defenders in the area. Nice move to the ball by Burton. I think uh, I think Coach Riley feels if he can go, he's the leader. And the Beavers haven't been in this situation. Start of the second half, momentum really swinging against them. It's time for the leaders to step up, and that's probably why Terrence Bryant is back in there. Now Burton was showing a blitz. He might have stepped in the zone. He, he was able to get back. They hand off right side to Simonton, and he grinds his way ahead for maybe four yards on the right side of the line. Down there to make the stop was Lester Towns. Towns dropped a 45 pound weight plate on his foot. He underwent surgery and he had, you know, he had bad feet anyway. So they went in and basically reconstructed the foot. It's amazing that he is out there playing right now. He's nearly at 100%, he says, but still is going to need surgery on the other foot. He said the foot felt like a couch. <laughs> carrying around on other, other people carrying a piano around the couch. Here's Bryant back to throw hard rush. Barnes is there to wrap him up, spin him around, and drop him to the stadium turf. A flag thrown on the play. That's going to be on the quarterback because he had, it was obviously nobody out there when he threw it away. We might have to keep an eye out on his left arm as well, Steve, as he's coming off the field. Jeremiah Farms doing the old slingshot move on him and <laughs> driving him to the ground. He may have landed on his left arm. Let's see if we can pick it up right here. Jeremiah, good pressure. Coming up field, and actually, Terrence Bryant should have just stepped up in the pocket instead of trying to go outside. Made his lineman look bad. Absolutely, the, the uh, left tackle, Jason White, was doing a pretty good job shoveling Farms to the outside. Terrence tried to escape to his left side so he could throw, and it was definitely a mistake. You wonder how bad the back is feeling. He doesn't look like dead at the spot. A forward progress. It's the right call. Second down. There's Jonathan Smith. Uh, probably be back in this game. Well, now last time uh, in the first half, Terrence Bryant was actually being held on to and been able to get rid of the football. Here he's held on to as well. Um, I'm not quite sure. He looked like he was trying to throw the ball outside to me. He did me too. Now Cortez is in his own end zone to kick off once again. And Jerzinka waiting down there lustily at the 40 yard line. Oh. Here's the boot end over end. Joe's going to run up to it, try to short hop it, lost it, ball loose, up for grabs, squirts free. Oregon State football at the 50 yard line. Looks like the Beavers have picked this one up. Both teams indicating they have a hold of the leather, though. Boy, if the Huskies got that one back, it's a wow. lot of. It's whoever has the strongest arms in the bottom of that pile. But Coach Lambright, he's going to think, going to talk to little Joe this afternoon. He's having a tough day. But that sure looked like Beaver football. I don't know how the guy too. lost it. Yeah, sure did to me too. Now Reggie Davis at the bottom of the pile. That might have something to do with it. He's one of the strongest guys on the field today. Yeah, I know. It looked like the Oregon State Beavers may not have given him the allowable distance, but it appeared the way Joe was trying to field the ball. Burton was able to wrestle the ball away. 
Nigel Burton is the man that was able to coach Mallory spirit it away. Special what are they telling Joe right now? I mean, do you, you continue to give him the green light? There's contact made at the line. Looks like some Huskies were moving on the front line. What's Rick Mallory telling him right now, sir? Right now, I think he's telling him that number one, you got to come up and get the football. If you're afraid of the guys not giving you enough room, come up and catch the ball. The officials will make the call if there's not enough distance giving you to allowable distance to receive the football. Dead ball. Ball start on the center of the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. The other thing, Kevin, he's probably just telling me, hey, listen, you little son of a gun. You do that again, I'm going <laughs> to place you in there. That's a lot. We've got more, more guy. We've got Teray Butler. <laughs> Joe knows he's inexpendable. He fills too many gaps. We're kidding Bob Bender. Bobby, you need a point guard? <laughs> Ever hear of Joe Jarzinka? Yeah, we thought about that. Here is Dane Looker, wide left, along with Gerald Harris. Huskies now on a first and 15 deal. Ball at the 45. Washington leading 28 7. Brock back to throw. The left hander slings a high bomb down the far sideline. Here's the pass juggled in and out of the hands. Of Andre Desishur, and it looked like Desishur might have got away with a chucks on the defender down there, Ricky Walker, who's been burned twice this afternoon with interference calls. Well, they're battling down there. Ricky Walker, and Steve, has been burned a few times, and right here, right there, like Andre with a slight push. <laughs> yep, there definitely was a slight push, but excellent. You know, they're both entitled to the ball. And Absolutely. That's kind of I don't mind that call at all. I I prefer it that way instead of the other. <laughs> Trips wide to the left side now for Washington. The handoff is to Harris. Oh, he catapults up over the middle and spins <laughs> down to just shy of the 50 yard line. That was a Ortiz Jenkins flashback. I was going to say that was a bad look right there. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't like that one. Jonathan Jackson and Anoki Brechterfield on the stop. But it still, I'm sorry, Steve, but the Huskies haven't really established a running attack all day coming in they needed to do that they wanted to do that great success throwing the ball you would think that would allow you to open up a few running lanes as well well i i would settle as an oregon state backer i would settle for a little bit more running game where's dan looker <laughs> been here's your back to throw he's going to gun it down the far side that one intended for gerald harris and the huskies will have to punt it away on a third down situation ricky walker in coverage down there Nice coverage there by Walker. Nice set. first time the Beavers are putting a little bit of pressure on. So the Beavers stop the Washington Huskies. And Ryan Fleming averaging just shy of 41 yards per punt. His first and only of the day, a 32 yarder, but remember he had to grab it off the turf and there's a short hard snap and this one is just tight spiral that's angling down to the 20. Taken on the move by Tim Alexander. He leans forward knocked down. Good coverage down there by the Washington Huskies. Ball marked at the 40. Make that the 23 yard line of the Beavers. Down in coverage was Jeff Johnson. 10-53 left in the third quarter. The score the Huskies 28 and the Beavers 7. We'll be right back. Oregon State back to work. Terrence Bryant remains in the ball game. He rolls out to the left and slants a pass out to the left side. Over there from the cornerback spot, Wandami Davis in coverage. Snuffed that one. Roddy Tompkins was the intended receiver. Absolutely no separation in receiver and, and defensive back there. Roddy Tompkins is going to catch that ball. He's got to drive him off another yard, get to the timing with the quarterback, and come back and create some separation. Wondemy Davis filling in for Jermaine Smith out with the injury. Mel Miller left, of course, before the season began for personal reasons. So you look at the two starting quarterbacks from a year ago out. And the Huskies have done an excellent job to compensate. There's a pass near sideline, tight roping. And run out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Tory Butler in coverage down there on Roddy Tompkins. Todd Johnson down there as well. Huskies running away from OSU. 
LSU right now 28 to 7. Oregon State came into the game 4 and 3. Next week they're at home against Cal, then home against UCLA. They get a bye on the 14th of November and then finish on the 21st with, of course, the Civil War against Oregon. That's right. Give them two weeks to prepare for those Ducks. Mm -hmm. Oregon State had a game scheduled early on in that slot with USC, but elected to change it to an early season game with USC to, to get the bye week uh, near the Oregon game. Uh huh. See the remaining games right there, and uh, those are some pretty good teams, folks. So Oregon State needs to take advantage of any opportunity. Certainly doesn't look good for them at 28-7 today, but uh, I haven't seen these Beavers quit under Mike Riley. No question about it, and uh, I look for them to at least make this uh, representative score some more points. You can see some moisture on Mike Riley's jacket there, man. It appears to be a slight drizzle falling now here at Husky Stadium. 44 left in the third quarter. They a little slippery down there on the turf. The Huskies lead 28 to 7. It's third down and one now for Oregon State. Simonton, the outstanding freshman running back, the long man from the backfield. Terrence Bryant, the quarterback. Bryant will just try to nose ahead. His initial surge was stopped. He was spun around sideways. Now, this is going to be very close. Like he gained it. Yeah, I think he got it, Steve. You're right. Solid. First down, Oregon State. Well, he's been so successful on that third and short, or fourth and short, that obviously the Huskies have seen it in film and are playing it right there. You, you uh, wish you could call the play right there, bounce it to the outside, and not have penetration to stop a Kenny Simonton with that ability outside right then. But uh, you can always second guess, I guess. <laughs> in this game? <laughs> third <laughs> guess, fourth Football guess. Football is. So. Hindsight's great. Center keep D. Domenico. Setting up Terrence Bryant rolling out with the snap. Flinging left side. Another first down for Oregon State. Roddy Tompkins run out of bounds. Nice precise route. He knew where he was. When he made the catch, he had run his 10 yards. He was right there. Good effort from Roddy Tompkins. He's a three-year starter at Oregon State. Uh, has the longest starting string on the Beavers' offensive side of the ball. As you said, very precise route. Um, He's a pattern runner, not a great speed guy. You'll see a lot of that kind of route out of Roddy or an up off those same kind of cuts. Tompkins wide left. They've got a tandem here to the near side. 28 to 7 Huskies. Bryant play action. Stops the left-hander. Pop. Man wide open. Oh, Roddy Tompkins. We were bragging on you and you dropped the football. Oh, boy. Wide out, right out there in front of Grandma and everybody. It just went <laughs> right through his hand. What well, happens? They are working over Wandami Davis out there, Kevin. Coming in, Jermaine Smith replacement number 11 for the Huskies, and Roddy Tompkins, Steve, how could he drop that? It's a beautiful route. Well, you know, sometimes if you watch your catches in his chest, he's usually a great hands guy. He'll catch you anything, good punt return guy. Looks like I'm so wide open, I'm gonna make sure of this. I'm sure you've seen it. I know Kevin and I've seen it this year. Every time a player gets that tight in there, and it's a drop ball. Brian hard rush dumps it nearly intercepted Mac to the IA had it and he might have been off to the races with it. Well last year Jabari Issa took a fumble back for a touchdown. Mac to IA had an opportunity right there and he didn't know what to do with the ball I don't think guys. Huskies have had three sacks already this afternoon and it was Lester Towns that time who's registered a sack. This afternoon they've got the Pressure on Terrence Bryant. Bryant will not take a sack, though. Will he, Steve? No, he, he unloads. Yeah, he is uh, three of them this afternoon, but uh, that's the most any time this year, and he is great at getting rid of the ball. The Beavers had something going right there. If he wouldn't have had the pressure, they had a screen outside that looked pretty darn good. Third and ten, split backfield. Bryant back, looking left, now right. Guns a pass underthrown, a tenner for Simonton. That wouldn't have given him much no. ground anyway had he made the catch. Good close coverage. Lester Towns was right there. Well, it just shows you when you give a quarterback in the Pac-10 or the NC2A time to throw the football, they're going to have more success than not. And the Huskies decided they'd better come after the young man or he's going to be able to pick him apart a little bit and take advantage of the redshirt freshman cornerback. And, and think about five times the Beavers have dropped balls today. They give up a good drive right there by Tompkins the dropping drop. the ball. Seven of 18 were at Oregon drops. State last weekend. <laughs> yeah, here's Joe Jerzyk. He's dropped two of them once for a turnover. Here's uh -oh. the ball. No, Cortez shanked it. He knew it right off the side of the foot. 
It flounders down at about the 40. Joe Jarczynka <laughs> takes it on the bounce. Stay alive down there, everybody. <laughs> Joe took it on the fly. And had he had, you know, any kind of room there at all, five yards, three yards, anything, he might have snuck by him. I agree. I mean, there was just a razor's edge there, and he walked out of bounds. I'm not, I'm not sure if the punter Cortez would have gotten over there in time, guys. Uh -uh. No way. He was gone. Watch this. What's he got? Maybe two yards there to make a cut. Wow. He just couldn't quite do it. Right there on the razor's edge. <laughs> Coach. Coach Mallory, go ahead and do what you always do. <laughs> yeah, forget what I just said. <laughs> Trips wide to the right, offset back is Harris. You are quick drop looking, under throws the intended receiver, Dane Looker. That's tough when you're throwing the ball to the far side of the field and the quarterback takes that little three step drop. I mean, the surge of the defense is getting there and pushing everybody back in that massive Husky offensive line and defensive front for Oregon State is. I wish they'd go a little bit deeper. I mean, as a, watching the passing scheme, Steve, you know, you give yourself some room to operate. I agree with you. Yes, they tried to test Andre Holland right there. Oregon State's best cover corner did a pretty good job. Oh, he was a blanket. 28-7 score, Huskies. 9:46 to go, third quarter. Ewart and the handoff left side. Harris gets a block, trying to turn the corner to across the 50, about the 45, driven out of bounds by Oregon State. Brown wants a flag. Oregon State with a Big shot on Harris, knocked his cap off. Pick up a six for Jason Harris. Still, the Huskies trying to establish a ground game, and they were not very successful in the first half in terms of the numbers. Well, right here, Jason Harris is going to see number 27. You're right, he bounced it out, finally got an opportunity to, and I think that uh, Micah Moore is pretty lucky he didn't get a penalty yeah, on that one. It was early out of bounds. Eight carries, 32 yards for Jason Harris. 9:41 remaining in the third quarter. The Huskies lead it, 28 to seven. Willie Hurst is the man in the backfield. Here's Brock back to throw. Quick snap throw intended for Jesse Fuhr. He was hit just as the ball arrived. Nice cover. Ricky Walker, who's uh, been in a couple of bad plays for Oregon State, makes uh, about his third in a row. That looks pretty good. Brock Ewart now 0 for 4 here in the third quarter through the air. The Huskies will have to kick it away. New punt return man for Oregon State, Gabe Schmitke. He's the holder on field goals and extra points. He's the best hands guy on the team. That's why he's back there. And it's raining. That might have something to do with Mike Riley's substitution here. How's a guy from Tucson, Arizona catch raining football? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> we'll see. He's under it. Fair catch. It's inside his 10. He'll let it go. He throws a block. The ball is caught down at about the two yard line. Now, correct me. I'll get to it here in a moment. 28 to 7 the count. Here's a man that fair catches, but yet sets a block. 9.24 to go, third quarter. We'll be right back in a moment. Twenty eight seven to score Washington leading Oregon State my question a moment ago is if Schmidtke fair catches a football he can't block that's what the rule says you got to get away get out of the play but apparently he didn't fair catch the football. He just let that one fly over it was inside his own 10 and so Oregon State takes over at the two and here's an incomplete pass. They're going to go with Jonathan Smith now I'll take a look here on the punt return or the uh, the punt to Schmidtke back here at his own 10. I thought he indicated fair. I must have been seeing things again. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I think that's but he said a heck of a, he said a heck of a block down there. But the Great ball did coverage. not get to the end zone, unfortunately. And good coverage. The Huskies snubbed it at the one. Kind of a sneak shot. Looks like he's going to catch it and then just belts the guy. Huskies trying to bear down on this freshman quarterback, Jonathan Smith of Oregon State. 
Smith was successful in the first half. Flings a pass. Nice play. Threw a bullet. Complete to Ronnie Tompkins. Tompkins seems to make the tough catches. And yeah, that uh, was made down at about the nine. A little breathing room for Oregon State. Good quick pass play like that. It's a good smart move. Jonathan Smith with that quick release. Able to get it out there. Not a bad day for the young man. Seven for 13. He does find a crease or a hole and it's uh, in between his offensive linemen. There's Smith looking at me. He's lobbying. He's working his way down the line, whispering in their ear. They're going to try to run out of time. The they got to get it rolling. He didn't get it done. That's a, that must be a new way of calling an audible. <laughs> I mean, he went to each and every one of those <laughs> yeah. linemen, didn't he? He didn't, he didn't miss a beat. Could have been a little more successful. Just, I'm going to call it on two guys. Yes. I don't think uh, Issa and some of those defensive linemen could get there any quicker anyway if they knew the count. So. Well, that'll set up a third and eight now as uh, once again, Oregon State is penalized. It's been the problems that they've had in the three losses thus far this year, turnovers and penalties. 28 to 7 Huskies lead. Here is the play action. Smith settles in. Long ball left side. Topkins with a reception. Smith with a beautiful play there. Play action just throws the defenders and flings it out to the left side to his favorite receiver, it appears, Roddy Tompkins. Well, I'm not sure we can put most of the blame on Wandami Davis, 11 here for the Huskies. You got Daryl Daniels, 24, is the weak backer who's supposed to drop back in coverage. You see him right there. But again, as you mentioned, Steve, in the first half, the Oregon State put this play in, our route in, for this football game, and it seems to be working. Tompkins with his fifth ball this afternoon. Smith will gun this one out now, intended for the near side. What a catch! Great. Sensational catch. grab by Tim Alexander. Gathers it in over the shoulder. Oh, what a catch that was. Well, there's a kid who plays 4,000 yards in total offense, been the star of this team from a quarterback perspective. When he had the chance to move out to flanker this year, he said, I'm going. Anything to help the team. He's the offensive captain, does everything. He's starting to fall into this job of a flanker and figure out that's a great catch. It's an absolutely great throw as well because that's where you want it, over that right outside shoulder. And Alexander, being a great athlete, calls it in. That reminded me a great deal of Jerome Payton and the way he used to get under those long balls. Remember, and kind of turn the body sideways and gather him in. Here's Smith back to throw. Guns a pass over the middle. Leaping grab made down at the two yard line by Ainsworth. Another tremendous catch and a well thrown ball by this freshman from Glendora, California. 34 yard hookup. Well, super play, super pass. The catching on this drive has been something the Beavers just haven't seen for several games. Ainsworth, early in the year, was one of the leaders in pass receptions in the league. He's got great hands, but typically a possession receiver. I was just going to say, Steve, right there, you saw the young man look off the safety, Brendan Jones, a little bit right there. If he'd thrown the ball right there, it'd have been a touchdown for sure. Held up just a little bit, and Jones is lucky he didn't get in the end zone on that play. Oregon State knocking on the door at the two. Here's the handoff. Simonton trying to bulldog his way in, but he stacked up, stood up. Walker Towns and Johnson all there. Gang tackle. Stay low. Brendan Jones gets up off the bottom of the pile. He, I guess, was the man that initiated the contact down there. So second down for Oregon State, and the ball resting at the Huskies' one-yard line. Pretty hard for Jones to get those shoulder pads underneath Ken Simonton. I know. That's low. <laughs> <laughs> nice tackle. State trying to get something rolling here with Smith handing off. Simonton will dive. Oh, he's hit high. Lester Towns went high. And it was interesting because earlier this week in an interview that the PI did, Lester Towns said he still had flashbacks of the Ortiz Jenkins high dive for the win here against Arizona and he said since that time he's going to go high they remember stacked up Cal right the tackle made right here staying up high taking the man right there pop <laughs> on the shoulders linebackers love those kind of hits and you're right you know that was such a he'll remember that probably for the rest of his life that what you know stay a little higher on that tackle 
They were able to ram it through the uprights and the Beavers and the extra point for the touchdown. So we thought the Towns had made the stop, but there was enough there. The ball over the goal line for the touchdown, and Oregon State does a beautiful job of moving it up the field through the air and cap it with the run over the middle from Simonson. It's 28-14, Huskies leading Oregon State. Well, Oregon State marches down the field 99 yards. Jonathan Smith did an outstanding job. The backup quarterback, a freshman, leads him up the field. Roddy Tompkins made a couple of key catches. Alexander, a tremendous grab to get him into Husky territory. And then Ainsworth made the catch down at the two-yard line. And now Oregon State will pooch this one up here to the near side. And it's taken out of bounds wisely by Johnson of Washington at the 36-yard line. As quickly, gentlemen, the only Heisman Trophy winner ever in Oregon State history was Gary Baker. Thank you. The year was 61. <laughs> 62. I think 63. I'm going to have to check that. 62, <laughs> trust me. All right. I will. I'm still going to look it up, though. Here's <laughs> left side. Willie Hurst. And there's a face mask as Hurst is dragged down by the cage. Penalty on Oregon State. Huskies leading by two touchdowns with 627 left here in the third. First and foul, 15 yard face mask on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. 15 yards on Oregon down. State. First down. That's too bad. He's in position to make a great play. Again, the Huskies having difficulty getting any surge against that defense. And yeah, you got to let go right there for a lot. That is a 15 yard play when you don't let go. Well, that, you know, Steve, you had. He had Brian Jones 43 in the picture right there. there was no there was not going to be a big gain on that running play. People are waiting for this young man Willie Hurst to break it out get some good yardage get a big run of more than eight nine yards uh, hasn't had any room to roam really from that offensive standpoint and a lot of big talk with this young man coming into the Husky hold this year. Washington just hasn't gotten that big burst from any of their tailbacks uh, their longest run from scrimmage has been Marcus Tuyasa Sopo. Dane Looker slants over the middle. He's wrapped up and knocked down hard after making the catch. Pick up a four or five on the play. Mike, on the market at Oregon State's 46. Micah Moore playing most all the game. Brian Jones does have a foot injury. Will not or Brian Rogers, excuse me, won't be back. Defensive captain for Oregon State. Micah Moore very undersized as you see for a linebacker but has played a lot and has great speed. I saw a few scouts in NFL squads here today looking at uh, Mr. Rogers and unfortunately <laughs> didn't get to see Mike. <laughs> Ewan switches out from the quarterback spot goes wide near side two yes so will option right side the pitch to Willie Hurst stops trying to cut back in. Knocked down double team Oregon State covered it beautifully out on the left side. That surprised me a little bit. You've got a guy Willie Hurst is supposed to have the explosiveness Instead of taking it all the way to the corner and getting what he can, he slows down and, and, and there's no place to roam. He's got to learn to take that and just go with it. I think what you said right there, he's got to learn. I think he's just a freshman playing some pretty big time football and just uh, can't do the same things he did in high school. Third and seven half of Washington. They're five for nine and converting them third down situations. Chris Jerkins in the lineup along with Harris wide left. Dessa sure and Looker wide right. Here's Ewart back to throw. Slants a pass near side. That ball intended for Jurgens, who was tied up. No flag. The ball looked to be underthrown from my perspective, but we'll get a look well, at it again. The official started to go for his flag, and he man must have made a determination it wasn't catchable. Calvin Carlisle in coverage down there. They clearly were arm in arm. You've got to be right, Sonny. I think you're absolutely right, because the official does see it. Yeah, the ball was up there. Was Nowhere near the receiver. Oregon State's been close to Ryan Fleming a couple times today on these punts. Gabe Schmidtke once again back to receive. Fair catch signaled at the 14, and he takes it on both knees. So Oregon State will get busy. Their own 14 trailing by two touchdowns. 4:42 left in the third quarter. We'll return to Husky Stadium in a moment.
Oregon State trailing by 14 with 442 left in the third quarter. Jonathan Smith, the freshman quarterback who engineered the 99-yard drive a moment ago for the touchdown, hands off to Ken Simonton who scored it on a goal line plunge. And Simonton wriggles his way ahead to the 19. Akeem Akbar makes the stop. This is a guy who is on speed, they're on pace to be the uh, next thousand yard rusher. You see the last and the only thousand yard rushers, all big fullbacks in the Deanne Rose Power football that uh, I was involved in. Bill Enyard, Pete Piper, I played with just big, bruising football players that uh, took the ball 25 times a game. Smith back to throw, flings one, spinning away. Ainsworth, he's got ground, he's at the 40, trying to lead the pack. Walker's after him, won't catch him. He will go the distance and score. Ainsworth got behind the defense, spins away, and there was nobody there. 80 yards for the TD. Ainsworth, who made a tremendous grab a moment ago in that long drive up the field, scores here. And the Beavers make it interesting. 28-20, 3.53 left in the third quarter. Well, great hands here, folks. Look at this. Look at the catch. Akbar trying to get the football. Missed tackle there. And then he was gone. Again, another freshman, Steve. Akeem Akbar, number nine, trying for something, you know, heroic. And... Uh, Letting Ainsworth go. Yeah, you got to take what's given to you, and certainly that was not what was given to him. Boy, I tell you what, though, Jonathan Smith has done a great job. <laughs> yes, he has. This is a football game, guys. Yes, Twenty-eight twenty. There was a flag down. I think that's a celebration, or was it? Well, the way that they're calling that. Over the play, it's a touchdown. During the play, there was a personal foul against the defense. That yeah. penalty is declined. Yeah, that was that late block after Ainsworth was in the end zone. You could see it on the replay. It was against the Huskies. That's Oregon State's longest uh, pass play for the season, far and away. 80 well, yards to Ainsworth, his second TD of the after of the uh, year. Well, Jonathan Smith is working yeah. himself up for uh, more PT time, no matter what happens question. today. I think you'll hear the same thing from Mike Riley that Jim Lambright said uh, earlier this week about his quarterbacks. Cortez automatic Bigfoot for the Beavers adds the extra point and it is 28 21 with 353 left in the third period and Oregon State has answered the questions will they come back and compete in the third quarter the answer is a resounding yes we'll be back in a moment. Twenty eight twenty one Washington leading Oregon State with three fifty three left in the third quarter and it's, this football game has decidedly swung one way and that's toward the Oregon State Beavers they've commandeered that football and they've been able to work it up the field the kickoff skids out of bounds down and around the one yard line and the flag flies the Oregon State Beavers on their first possession of the third went ninety nine yards for the touchdown. The 83rd meeting between these two teams and UW has allowed OSU to score 21 plus points only twice since 1975. If you go back to 85, the last time the Beavers beat Washington 21 to 20. Washington has beaten Oregon State 10 times in 20 or 10 straight times in 20 of the last 21 meetings. How about that 37 point underdog? Yeah, wow. that's. I remember that and I thought it was ridiculous then. Here's Ewart now hands off to her nice spins game. around one defender and then is double teamed out on the right side. <laughs> Boy, Oregon State just doing an outstanding job defensively right now Steve to, to shore up the gaps. 
Are they sure? They, they play what they call a gap cancellation defense with their small size. They just take a gap, try to bounce people out. So the middle linebacker and those two great outside uh, Brian's, if you call them, Brian Jones, Brian Rogers, can make plays uh, with the free safety. So they're, they're doing their job today, which is kind of surprising in some ways because two key pe players are hurt. Second and seven for the Huskies, a passing situation. Brock Ewart back. Three step drop, flings a pass out here, underthrown to Andre Desassure, and incomplete. And Sonny, conversely, Washington's offense has suddenly just gone south. I mean, well, it's in the freezer right now. Brock Ewart has not been on target on a few passes out there, which makes you wonder about the arm a little bit. And what happens, I think, when you get up 28-7, you think it, 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 everything's so easy, and you get a guy like Andre Desenshire, well, God, it was so easy. I had all that great first half, and now maybe I don't need to break that route off like I was in the first half, and a lot of things happen like that mentally, for the, at least for the Huskies at the moment. Third and seven now for Washington. Working the ball for the far hash mark. Ewart, quick drop, nice pass over to the right side where Joe Jerseka makes the catch and lunges across for the first down at the Washington 46 yard line. You are now two for eight on the afternoon and uh, something like 12 yards total in the second half. Good whip throw right there and tell you Joe Jarzinka was not going to let that ball out of his grasp. Good two handed grab right here. He's kind of a folk hero up here isn't he? Yes, he, he is. is. He had a uh, a nickname contest among the uh, the student body this week. <laughs> And it was uh, they gave him the nickname Mojo. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> we want to see Mojo. Well, you know what's great? <laughs> we haven't we haven't seen him all afternoon. We hadn't had a grin from ear to ear. Even when he fumbles the football, he, he has more fun. It's an adventure. Yeah, he, coaching staff loves it. He's kind of enthusiasm. Davis, the tight end, left side, one man in the backfield, and uh, splits left and right. Here's the handoff. And up the middle is Willie Hurst. Willie grinds a couple of yards to about the 50. Oh, Willie's having a tough day. Pat Conniff going out with uh, look appeared to be re-injuring his right knee. Yeah. And uh, the running game is really kind of taking a turn south as well. And that and that's one thing. You come into a ball game, you've got your big fullback in the lineup again, and you're trying to establish that running attack. And he's gone. You're going back to where you were before you started out the week. Chris Jergens now, the freshman in the lineup. He's caught a touchdown pass this afternoon on Gerald Harris, wide left. Second down deal, nine yards. We're back to throw. Hard pass, landing it right side to Destin Shore. Breaks free of the tackle and earns the first down. He's across the 40. The mark at the Oregon State 39. Great second effort by Andre after the catch. Ricky Walker finally wrestled him down. On this play, you take a look at Andre. At the top of the screen, down, didn't really drive off his man on that play. It looked like Ricky Walker could have closed a little quicker as the throw was being made, but Andre doing a good job of avoiding the tackle from Walker and then getting good yardage. That number two guy right there. Rocky well, well, moves by Carrick and he's breathing down Sonny's neck. I tell you, <laughs> it was a lot of work for me to get there. <laughs> <laughs> These guys make it look easy. Still have ice on that one. Here's Europe with a throw. That was intended for Andre Desishir down the left side. Pretty good coverage by Oregon State there. That'd have been a circus catch had Andre been able to pull it into his arms. I don't know how he even saw the ball. Calvin Carlisle was all over him like a, an old worn out sweater. <laughs> what Oregon Better State's than a sofa? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oregon State's made an interesting move here as you look at this. Calvin Carlisle's the backup strong safety. They moved to starting strong safety. Maybe their uh, their best football player defensively to the free safety spot. Armon Hatcher, 15. Good coverage by Carlisle makes it second and ten now for Washington. 28-21. Washington showing some momentum for the first time here in the second half. Offensively handoff really hurt. Shoe string, second surge, brought back. Gang tackled. Just stood up. And after the whistle. Oregon State and Washington persist down there tangling up with Micah Moore with the uh, Willie Hurst. You know, I still have to say that you watch the offensive line here. It appears like there was going to be a hole, but somebody along the front broke down and didn't get their block down there. Looked like Jonathan Jackson came in and made a great play, Steve, whether anybody was trying to get him or not. Yeah, just a lot of speed from the Beavers. That's how they have to play it with the size. Third and nine for the Huskies. Ewart looking left. 
Near side, another defensive gem turned in by Oregon oh, State. There's but, a big mistake. Yeah, that was wow. a huge mistake because that was a third down deal, an incomplete pass to Looker. But the man in coverage wow. down there was Calvin Carlisle, still pumped up from that last play he made, and he stood over Looker, and that'll cost him a personal foul. Well, I don't know, Steve. This is a kind of, if I was Mike Riley, I'd have my hat off on that young man because great. Unsportsmanlike taunting by the defense. Yeah, unsportsmanlike taunting. Penalty, results in a first down. This, I mean, flat out stupid. You can't yeah. say anything else but that. That's you got to have better control and composure. Calvin Carlin makes a great play here. He's got him blanketed. Drives over. They got to punt the football. And I don't think if he'd have made the grab, if he'd have had enough for the first down anyway. And you know how quick the, the and he maybe he probably said something there as well. I would. I should guess it. Now oh, the Oregon oh. State assistants knew what was going oh, on. Oh, absolutely. They? Yeah. Look at Mike Riley right on top of Mike Johnson, receiver coach. That's a huge play. The Beavers are in it right here. First and ten now for the Huskies. And the handoff to Willie Hurst. Second effort, trying to turn his way and spin his way down to the 20. He just pick up a three or four on the play. You just cringe when you see that kind of thing happen from Oregon State's perspective. Boy, boy, they've been a couple quick. Uh, Flags on those celebration already today. You'd think as a player, man, I'm not going to say anything. These guys are flag happy. We talked about it before on the other side of the ball, Sonny. But 32 is a freshman, true freshman, playing, and he's uh, he's got to learn. Yeah, and I, he was feeling pretty good about himself. So he was uh, <laughs> he was there to make the play. Huskies will let the clock tick down. That'll end the third period of play. It was all Oregon State here in the third quarter. They came from 28-7 back at half, put some points on the board. Two touchdowns, one of them from this man, Greg Ainsworth, who broke away for an 80-yard hookup for freshman quarterback Jonathan Smith. That makes it 28-21, Washington after three, back in a moment. We head to the fourth quarter of play with the Washington Huskies leading Oregon State 28 to 21. Oregon State with two unanswered touchdowns in the third quarter has made a game of it again. Al Burleson from the mid 70s defensive back being recognized for his great exploits on Saturday afternoons wearing the Husky colors. Brock Ewart. In a quarterback, second and eight. Back to throw, pump fake, looking deep in the end zone, floats it up. Harris is there, overthrown out of the end zone, incomplete. Good tight coverage applied by the Oregon State Beavers secondary, and down there was number 23, Andre Holland. Through three quarters, first downs, Oregon State 16, UW 18, rushing yards 102 for Washington, 86 for OSU. Passing yards 301 OSU 256 the University of Washington. Third down conversions for Washington six for 12 today. They're in a third and eight deal now. The ball resting at the Oregon State 21. Dessa Shure turned. The ball was already in the air when he turned the ball sails over his head. Brock Hewitt knocked down on the turf. Oregon State holds and now Joe Jarzinka will come out for the field goal. Now this is a long field goal for Zarzinka, isn't it? Yes it is. He had a 35 yarder though remember and his first start as the field goal kicker and he's had two extra points of 35 yards and this one gentlemen what about a 37 yard 37. Yeah. He's close. That's there chump I... change for Joe. <laughs> oh they're going to fake it. They're going to pitch to Joe. He's got to turn the corner get the first down. He does. He got the first down on the fake field goal attempt. Ryan Militich, the fourth string quarterback, took the snap 
raised up. Joe Sprint's left side, perfect pitch, <laughs> turned the corner, got the first down. Flying chickens in a barnyard, what a play. Well, here goes another nickname on campus competition. <laughs> Great job, Ryan Militich. And a ballsy call, I think, right here. But again, you asked the question, Steve, is this his range or not? And a good play, good call, and a great effort to get the first down. But you know what's really going to astound you here is Oregon State was looking for this. They said anytime the ball's on the 20 or more, it's a fake. He isn't going to kick it. They were in a prevent defense there, Sonny, and still got beat. That's a good point. Ball on the far hash mark now. First and 10 for the Huskies. Ball at the 12. They're going to get it to Willie Hurst. Willie trying to jitterbug his way in there. Pinballs and is knocked down at about the eight yard line. It was also an interesting setup. They were at five and a half yards, which is about a yard and a half short. So you knew they weren't going to try to kick it. Uh, well, maybe, maybe they were trying to make it shorter. <laughs> 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 He's something. He's an exciting little ball player, I'll tell you that. Uh, How many years? It seems like he has been here for 11 years, and I, I read he's only a junior. <laughs> Ball at the eight, second and six. Ewart up on tiptoes, looks right, closed off, looking left, gunning it in the end zone. That's a smart play. Harrison run his route, he broke it off and tried to double back. The ball intended for Gerald Sales by him, but a flag is down at the one yard line. I think it could be holding. Uh, it didn't look like interference, but uh, that time, good defense by Oregon State, though, on the near side, Steve. There was two receivers and three defenders. Excellent job, and Brock did the smart thing, though. I wonder if it was catchable. That was a good read by both the quarterback and receiver the there. In the air, holding on the defense. Half yep. the distance penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Good look, Gerald Harris. Nice little down and out. Not the primary receiver on this play, but again, Ricky Walker just getting in the way and grabbing a little bit right there. There's an experience factor there for the corner. If you just don't hold your hands up in the air right then, you probably get away with something like that in close contact. Looked like Harris was probably the third receiver. Yeah. Husky football on before and a first down. Brock rolling out left. Loops it in the end zone. Was it a trap ball? Wow. Gerald Harris made the catch, but was it trapped? Where's the indication? Well, there's two officials right there. They call a touchdown. They're calling a touchdown. The sirens going off, but I have yet to see the official raise their arms, particularly the one that was on the scene. Good pressure on Brock right here, but Gerald Harris zeroing in, yep. and I think uh, it was on the turf myself. I did too. Yep. That's, a, that's a bad call. Touchdown Huskies 34 21 so that penalty cost Oregon State here's the point after it's up and good that's the most important thing whether not whether he caught that but that key penalty the key penalty the unsportsmanlike conduct on Carlisle that kept the drive alive and then of course the the fake field goal for the first down it's 35 21 the Huskies by two TDs back with more in a moment. Well, the Huskies come back and score the TD to give them a 14-point bull chair with 13.50 to go in the fourth quarter of play. Gerald Harris with the catch in the end zone. Welcome back, Gerald. Take a look at it again, guys. Tell me what you think the second time around. Well, he did a great job of separating himself from uh, defender Walker, but right there, it looked to me like it hit the purple turf. Maybe the officials saw too much purple down there, but... Uh, Either way, it is a touchdown. Well, the touchdown call came from the official in the corner who was actually behind his back. Couldn't see the ball bouncing like we could. And nobody from this side of it uh, probably had a call either. So, yeah. But it, but I think you said it right when, or Kevin said it right, when it was the penalty. That, uh, two penalties on that drive for first downs, and the big one against uh, this, the Carlisle was the one that really made that series. It's got to really hurt your defense too because then they after giving the ball the big play up on the penalty they stop him and then Jerzinka fakes the field goal. Here is Ainsworth 
with the return. He's run out of bounds in front of his own bench down around the 30 yard line. 20 yard return for Greg Ainsworth. Let's flash back in time with the Huskies leading by two TDs here this afternoon. Climb into the Wayback Machine with uh, Sherman and Peabody. <laughs> so this is Dave Craig. The Dave Cragthorpe era. I believe that's the field goal that or the punt that was blocked. Um, 37 point underdog Beavers win. With white helmets. Yep. That was a that was a sad day in Huskyville. Huskies have white pants this afternoon. That's what they call a captain's choice. Here's the handoff. Smith giving it up the middle to Simonton and a pickup maybe of a couple on the play. Now the Husky defense right now, Steve, needs to get a little pressure on this young quarterback, get in his face a little bit. They have not really gotten after him very hard this, this afternoon. I give Oregon State's offensive line a, a tip of the hat. They have done a very good job against this Husky uh, pressure. I think that Coach Le right there just give the old Pelour the yep. uh, take sign. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's got. Johnson slanted here to the near side. Is he going to rush? No, he's going to drop back in coverage. They're going to throw right at him. Smith gets it underneath to Tompkins. It took a lick from Jones, bounced off, hang on, hangs on to the football. He's down at the 45, and there's a flag back at the Oregon State 20 yard line. Looks like a, a late hit. I can tell that because everybody's walking. Yeah, they're walking. <laughs> Rubber <Rubbing laughs> passer on the defense. We'll tack on 15 yards to the end of the run. That's a big game. First down. Well, Smith to Tompkins. That's been a, a real potent combination for Oregon State because it was those two that hooked up on that first drive of the third quarter to get them down the field. And then, of course, that big catch by Alexander sets up the TD. The first of the third quarter. And then Ainsworth broke free on that 80 yard reception for the second score of the third quarter to get him. I, I'm just real impressed with Oregon State's passing schemes and the way they're finding the pocket. Yep. And this young quarterback, Smith, coming in, delivering the football right on the money. He's been very cool. Here's the handoff to Simon. He lost the football, but fell right on it. It looked like a. Maybe my eyes deceived me, but it looked like that ball was jarred free. It bounced down and came right back up to him like it was on a string. Josh Smith. Sent a jolt into him. But again, you've got to do these little running plays in the middle, whether he does it or not, to allow guys like Jonathan Smith to get some completions like 12 for 18, and that's not a bad day. 285 yards. Wow. I can't remember the last time I've seen that at Oregon State, Steve. No, and Terrence Bryant has had that kind of day a couple of times this year, but he's definitely whoa, big play going here. Screen play to Simonson, right side 20, cut back 15, flags down there as he's run out of bounds at the 12. Oh. And the indication by Oregon State's Jonathan Smith back here at the 40 to his own bench is a clip. Look like Ainsworth, number one, rode the Husky defender all the way out of bounds, Kevin. Well, you're right, though, Steve. That was set up. Great play. They run that screen very well today. Yeah, you screen a, a defensive pressures like this Husky team does. And it's worked very well. This is the most success Oregon State's Illegal had. Illegal block in the back during the run by the offense. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. Repeat second down. It's a nice setup here. One thing when you do a screen, you got to stay cool and focused and find your receiver because, especially Simonton being 5'7 running back, you know, you can get lost in there with all those white jerseys, those big linemen up there. And it's a good job by the quarterback. But again, uh, not a real smart block down there. No. Tim Alexander, normally uh, very smart in situations like that. Probably the best blocker of the, of the wide receivers. Second down and 25, or actually uh, second down and five. Ball wrestling at 25. Smith swings one near side. That one intended for Alexander, but under throw. Incomplete pass brings up third down. Jose Cortez, three for four from. Well, better than. Uh, well, it seemed to me he had, what, three of them at better than 30 yards last weekend. He's waiting over there. He's yet to attempt. Well, he did attempt one field goal, but it was blocked this afternoon. Terrence Bryant waiting in the wings over there. Look back with Terrence. Actually, the, the three of four was two weeks ago. Oh, that's right. Uh, against yeah. Stanford. And yeah. boy, what, a, what a lift to a team to have a guy that's got a football ball. He had 22, 42, <laughs> really? and 52 yards. 
Well, that was about a size 19 that afternoon. There's Smith flushed out of the pocket. And finally brought down from behind. Josh Smith. In coverage. Got him in the back flow. Boy, that's relentless pursuit right there. And that's one thing that Josh Smith has done all season, Steve. He will not get on the play. Looked like he was pretty well blocked in there, but Jonathan Smith seeing a little open here. Nobody opened downfield for him to find, and uh, you only have so much time. Absolutely. 40 points. <laughs> Take a look. 30 sacks last three games. That's unconscionable. Mm. It's unfair, wow. actually. <laughs> the Beavers started off tremendously well, have not had a lot of good three. See, three sacks for the Beavers last three. A lot of that's because teams have kept people in the block of Big fourth, fourth down. Fourth down and nine. A long nine. A ball at the Husky 29 yard line and a flag flies. Too much time. That's interesting that from that, this standpoint, Steve. A game on the offense. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. You, we just talked about the distance and what would have been like a 45 yard field goal? A little bit would have been right on. Uh, yeah. yeah. About a 45 yard attempt. And Cortez is 10 for 15 this year from field goal range. He's 3 of 4 from 50 yards or better and as long as the 52 yarder this year. And Steve mentioned they were beat by Arizona last weekend 28 7, but he was a huge factor in the win over Stanford two weeks ago. Let's watch that corner route again, guys. See if that's opening up again for the Beavers. Fourth I got it 14. Smith flings it off the outstretched fingertips of Ainsworth. And had he caught it, Johnson was right there with him. And there's no doubt he'd have brought him down well shy of the first down. So the Beavers gamble. I was thinking they'd go with that bread and butter all afternoon of that deep corner route. It seems to have been working. The only time it hasn't is when Robbie Tompkins dropped an apparent reception. Yeah, it looks like you can see on the sideline, it looks like there's miscommunication there. Smith signaling that there was supposed to be some other pattern run. I'm surprised the penalty just before that obviously makes it a whole different call anyway, Sonny. Mm -hmm. Huskies take over. First to ten and Ewart. Rolling out. Looking for some insurance. Thrown against the grain. He had Dane Looker out there, but overthrew him. Ewart having to throw on the run. Micah Moore in coverage. Good pressure that time. I wonder what that number 56. What's his name, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of pressure. Lots of pressure. Different halves. Yep. There's a Noki right there. What what he creates with double teams himself is really opened it up for other people. Briley, uh, Sean Ball has had a very fine year. Jamil Braithwaite on the uh, other end has had a field day on some different occasions. Looker, Jesse Sure, and Harris wide to the right. Oregon State might have jumped off. No flags. Here's the handoff to Hurst. Marches across. Is stood up. And he picks up three or four yards on the play. Clock running. 10.54 left fourth quarter. 35-21. The Huskies lead the Beavers. Well, you know, normally at this situation, you want to make that ground game very successful to burn the clock, Steve. But the way the Huskies have been running the ball this afternoon, really, it's a... Uh, you got to do a little more play action passes I would assume from the Husky standpoint. I agree with you. I think the Beavers have bottled up their run pretty well. Dessa sure has had a huge afternoon. He's flanked out here to the near side. He's been the main man. The H back is looker. He slants across the middle. Buard looks that way but then flings out on the far corner. That one intended for Harris. But coming over from behind to break that play up was Ricky Walker. Who's <laughs> walking the edge once again? He's been victimized twice this afternoon with interference calls. This time he was right there at the brink. Good cover right there. Good drive on the ball. Oops. <laughs> I, I think didn't, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Body, yeah, but you know he did a neat thing. His right arm went straight up in the air, and, and you know the official probably looked at that and said, "Hey, he's not grabbing the guy." And then they're both have they're no. both going to the football. He learned from that, Steve. That's that last one. You're right. Fleming gets away a beauty. Man, he paid a heavy toll for that punch too. He was knocked down hard. The ball down there at the 21 yard line is fielded. And then a man just pushed out of bounds over there. Oregon State will take it back at their own 21. Ryan Fleming says, I didn't see this kind of action at St. Olaf's. They weren't this big at St. Olaf's. Hop. Oh boy. Ouch. 
have to pause just a certain amount of time before he, but he changes from punter to tackle. <laughs> it's like standing around watching the play and getting belted because you think you heard a whistle. Here's the rollout pass under thrown. Trying to scoop it up off the turf down there, the intended receiver. And that was James Battle. Again, that route was open though, and and Smith just kind of mad at himself right there for not getting enough air. You know, and, and you got to get it's like throwing the ball from third base to first base. You know, you got to get that nice little arc on that ball. And uh, you get a little slope here at Husky Stadium, so you need to do that. Looked like he actually felt like he was rushed. He didn't get his feet set like he has in the past. Well, it gets a little tense now. You got 10 minutes to go. You got to <laughs> pick it up a little bit, and your feet tend to move on you a little while, sometimes, anyway. Beavers down by 14. Smith pump fakes, looking long out to the far side. That ball is slightly overthrown. And an incomplete pass. Roddy Tompkins, I believe, yep, was the intended receiver. Two Ray Butler down there in coverage. The Beavers this afternoon are 5 for 12 in converting. Again, third down situation. Yeah, but you'd like to have yourself third, four, third, five. You don't want third and ten on two passes like that. It makes you a little bit tougher to get. The ball resting at the 22. Beavers go back to work. Smith, the freshman at the far hash mark. He's been outstanding today. Quick drop. Flushed out of the pocket. Going to throw on the run. Guns it. Would have been a first down had it been caught. But a nice play by Nigel Burton down there as he wrestled that ball away from James Battle and batted it free. Excellent job by Nigel Burton, the senior co-captain, staying right with Battle on that play and not over committing, Steve, and trying to get that body up there to create any contact. But, but again, Smith stepping up in the pocket, delivering the football, a little behind the receiver. Sometimes you, the young guys, you got to throw a right at those numbers. And Burton made a great play. You know, he came over from the safety because they ran a corner blitz right then. That's as tough a coverage as there is. <laughs> running to somebody and having to cover him. Cortez will loop this one high into the air. Terzica, oh, takes a shot. Got right up under the chin, down at the 45. The ball rolls free. Oregon State's got it. They're blowing it dead. They're going to bring it back. That was a uh, pretty, that's an out out cheap shot right there. Yes, it is. Joe Jarzinka at the 40 yard line was planted waiting for that ball to come down and he took it right up under the chin before the ball got there. We'll sort out the penalty here but you know what it's going to be. Oh man that's that's a helmet on face mask contact and the Beavers might be less one player when we come back in a moment. Team, 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first and ten. Boy, 15-yard penalty from the spot of that foul. Jarzinka takes a helmet under the chin. It was Darnell Robinson who remains in the game. Well, it's just no excuse, Sonny. Boy, that's a uh, he can't wow. complete stupidity on this one. Yeah, but I don't <laughs> understand why he's still in the football game. You know you. I guess you practice all week and, and think this guy's going to catch the ball, but you got to be smart. No excuse. But that's a but no. That's Mike a, Riley saying, "Son, you no, come on, don't tell me any story right here." No, but that's that's helmet contact. I mean, that that's tantamount to spearing in my book. Here's a first carry left side. I mean, that guy has got Robinson deserves to be kicked out of the football game. Tackling is one thing, but that, that's the helmet. That's right up under the chin. Well, I agree with you. No but uh, Robinson stays in the football game. And meantime, the Huskies work the ball up to uh, about the 34 yard line with 919 left in the game. Now they can't afford the turnover here. They conceal the deal by taking care of the football here up by two touchdowns. You heard at the far hash mark. It's second and four the hand off to Willie I uh, tried to cut back but as we mentioned it started raining here at halftime and the footing is going to be sloppy slips and falls 
Is that sloppy or slappy? <laughs> slappy. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like little Joe's okay down. He's got that big chin strap on. Thank God he's got that one instead of the old cloth one, Steve. Remember those? You, you look like they felt like paper down there. Nice. <laughs> Joe, there's no problem. It's just my chin. <laughs> and the hat right there is Terrence Carroll, the free safety that's uh, much missed today by Oregon State. Urant rolls out and a nice play. Looker was the intended receiver, but playing it beautifully with Brian Jones reaching with the left hand to fend off that pass. It looked to me like that time Brock Hewitt made the wrong decision. It looked it appeared that Gerald Harris was wide open in the little curl route. And sometimes you get locked in on your favorite receiver. That time it appeared like Brock and Looker were uh, or at least Brock was looking for Looker all the way. Say that again. Brock I know Hooker. Good Lucker. thing Hooker's not in. I yeah. really messed up. Yeah, Jawaran Hooker was. Uh, he has had injuries all year this year. He did suit up, would be available to play, but they've had so many guys get healthy in the receiving core that uh, there really is no need to put Hooker in the football game. We'll give him another week of rest. Fleming gets rid of this punt. What a beauty! He just boots that thing inside the ten, and then it got sideways rotation. Out of bounds, it goes at the nine. A beauty by Ryan Fleming. Back to throw now. Is Smith is going to air it out. He's got a man wide open. He could go. Alexander in a foot race 30, cutting back 20, trying to open ground on Davis. Lunges, won't get there. Touchdown. And it's Ronnie Tompkins with a catch. Ronnie Tompkins goes the distance 90 yards. Holy cow. Smith is over 300 yards passing on the afternoon. And look at the Beavers. They're back in this baby with eight minutes remaining in the game. Wow. Look at the look at the time he has. Great job by the offensive line. And it is absolutely on the money. I'll tell you, if that would have been Tim Alexander, it wouldn't have been a question or a <laughs> big. It wouldn't have been that close. No. But Tompkins made the right move by cutting inside, and Davis no longer had an angle on it. Cortez is money. He's going to add the extra point. It's up. Little chip shot up and through. And look out. The Beavers are back within a touchdown with plenty of time. 8.02 remaining in this game. The freshman, 391 yards passing his third TD of the afternoon. This time it goes to Roddy Tompkins. We have got a whale of a game. Don't miss it. We'll be back in a moment. Well, Jonathan Smith's 391 yards rank him third best for the Oregon State all-time annals in passing yardage in a game behind Eric Wilhelm's 461-yard effort and 406-yard effort in 87 and in 88. Tory Butler received the kickoff to stride his own goal line. Marches up the field off the near hash mark across the 25-yard line, and there he is dropped down. So the Huskies, Brock Hewitt begins work there. The Huskies clinging to a seven-point lead with 7.51 remaining in the game. How about Jonathan Smith, who didn't even start this afternoon? Well, I'll tell you one thing. I think he's pushing Terrence Bryan a little bit. I'd have to take a real hard look at this. I, I can't imagine Terrence Bryan throwing or delivering the football quite as well as Jonathan Smith, Steve. Well, he's had a great day, and certainly uh, you got to <laughs> all avoid it like Lambright did, okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> he's going to earn some playing time. You can see that. I just did that for the fans in Corvallis. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Hewitt back to throw, pump fakes, flushed out of the pocket, going to keep it, and he's able to lean ahead to about the 30-yard line to pick up a five or six on the play. It's one of the better running plays today for the Huskies. <laughs> Hewitt hasn't made too many bad decisions, has he? 
Not today, but I tell you what, the Husky offense is uh, Kevin on the last series. I think they get something here with great field position. They can lock it away. And son of a gun, Oregon State played tough defense yep. and come back with a great offensive offensive play with uh, Robbie Thompson. And once again, the Huskies have been susceptible to the deep ball. Here's a handoff. Oh, going right side, and boy, the uh, Huskies. They're Just pumped up that nowhere time. Nowhere that time. Brian, Brian Jones. Jones. Yeah. He, he makes more big plays, and he's just got incredible speed. He only goes about 215. Braxton Clement with his first carry of the afternoon on, on that play, Steve. He doesn't want to have a second, I don't think. He'll go out, and Jarzinka comes in. Jarzinka will slip in there at the H back spot. Watch the coverage. Here's another true freshman for the Huskies plan. You mentioned uh, Beavers having a few. Braxton Clement right there getting sandwiched pretty good, and. Now we have a no back five receiver set. They clear out the backfield trips left and a deuce to the right. Quick drop looking middle. There's the pass to Jarzinka broken up. Brian Jones. Yeah and don't stand over the pin Brian. <laughs> don't stay on the ground. <laughs> well that was sure a quick set by the Husky offensive play calling. I, you know at that time you want to try and get something solid going but uh, boy yep. Brian Jones had him blanketed. Ewart flushed out, dropped for a five yard gain. Clement gets nowhere. The incomplete pass. Bring on Ryan Fleming. 35 28, Huskies by seven. 6 26 left in the game. And the way Oregon State's been marching down the field, that's more than enough time. Fleming's going to have to get away a beauty. Flags fly off the side of his foot. Good golly, it goes out of bounds at the Oregon State 47 yard line. Boy, if you're a Husky fan right now, you don't like the way this thing's looking. Outsides on the defense. Oh, oh boy. Oregon State. Oregon State. Wow. Decline. Why, why did he say no good? I think, yeah. He is Pat Flood, the referee, got himself going the wrong Outsides direction. Outsides on the defense will be accepted. Also yeah, first there down. you go. <laughs> That's it, Pat. It's going to be accepted. Oregon State once again shoots themselves in the foot. Boy, you look back at drop passes, penalties. I mean, really uh, bad penalties too. The unsportsmanlike conduct a moment ago. Uh, the kick, the, the unsportsmanlike conduct in the first half. And the Remember big hit on Joe Jordan drive kick? alive on Carlisle. Yeah, Oregon State is right. They might have a lead at this point. You don't uh, know. Without a doubt, you just wonder how this can happen. You you featured it early on at the outset of the show, and it's again shoot yourself in the foot and. Uh, can't happen and win in this league. So the Huskies now have got to take advantage. They have the football at their own 36, first and 10 after the penalty on the Beavers. And the handoff to Braxton Clement. And there's no game there. And the natives are restless. Boy, Sean Ball that time with a big play on the inside, Steve. And the thing is, we haven't really talked about him too much today, but he's, he's been inner disruptive for that whole Oregon State defense. And letting these guys make some good plays. Well, we haven't well, seen much of Brian Rogers, but, right? But these three guys have great speed. They're all three in the top 12, 14 in the league in tackles, and they make plays, make things happen. This guy is third in the league in tackles right here, and Jones is fifth. Well, the Huskies stay conservative. You are back to throw. Guns it over here to Desisure. Did he make the catch? He did not. He trapped it at the 45. Brock has been throwing the ball low on several occasions this afternoon, and a lot of times. I used to always think is because you're not setting yourself and pointing yourself to the receiver and planting your foot and delivering the football right here he does step up but maybe someone got a hand on it. I couldn't quite tell there but again low to the receiver man down is Ricky Walker well the Beavers can't afford to have anybody else going down that looks like a cramp though mm -hmm. still yeah. will have to go out yeah. now who would come in and his replacement with wow. the other cornerbacks already playing safety. You know you're going to have to move the big guy 15 out to the corner strong safety he played there as a freshman and started. That's what will happen. Third and 10 for the Huskies when we return with the ball resting at their own 36 540 left in the game the Huskies lead 35 28. We'll be back in a moment.
35 28 the Huskies lead the Oregon State Beavers with 540 left in the fourth quarter play Brock Hewitt the quarterback turn play action sacked and brought back to the 22 yard line not just a sack but a big loss and Jonathan Jackson bus free for the big loss right here a little play action but see Reggie Davis number five perhaps that was his man Jonathan Jackson just blowing through there showing that speed you're just talking about well, nice play the last week or so they've been working on sending a linebacker when he's man check blocks may have happened with Reggie Davis as you say right there coverage is going to be very very important on Tim Alexander here's Fleming block the punt is free Oregon State has the football at the Husky seven unbelievable we showed it a moment ago the 1985 flashback the block punt for a TD that was a textbook execution of coverage as it was blocked off of Fleming's foot and recovered by the Beavers. Watch this. Now this well, is a one-man block. It isn't even a block that they turn to Neil Braithwaite loose. He's done this three times this season. He's one-on-one. -on -one. Just go get it. He doesn't like a pass rusher. All right, two things on that, though. You saw the snap being wide to the right of the yep. punter, Steve. Yep. And, and also, Ryan Fleming, his momentum carried that direction to Braithwaite so he could make that block. Absolutely right. Oregon State football first down the ball resting at the Husky seven. They are down seven. Smith lobs it in the end zone going for the tie over through the football. The Huskies have put Omar Lowe now at that corner position number 12 in place of Wanda Mee Davis who's been burned several times today by Oregon State. Robert Prescott the intended receiver down there second and goal ball resting at the seven now for the Beavers. Battle 83 is normally the guy in this situation they go to because he's 6'3. Wide outs left and right. They got a tandem left, a duo right. Simonson, the only back delay. Try to go up the middle, read by the Huskies, dropped at the line of scrimmage, thrown maybe for a loss of one or two. Good read that time by the Husky defense to look out for number 35. I think this is a guy you do have to watch out in this situation with only five, six yards to go for a score, Steve. The guy's got great vision. That's quickness. Yep. That was well, well defense. No question about it. I would have called that play from up here because that's Mike Riley's style. He'll try to balance it. Look, look, look here. This has been an option play for the Beavers. They run up weak side right here. Looks like the. Oops. Looks like they're going to have. Third and six. Smith going to have to throw. Rolls out. Big tackle made by Jeremiah Farms down at the 19-yard line of the Huskies' hole. Not only that, but they put pressure on Jose Cortez now for the field goal opportunity here, if that's what they elect to do. I think they'll go for it, guys. And right there is that inexperienced team. Get rid of the football. Absolutely. Don't lose that valuable yardage down here on the goal line. Absolutely. Second sack for Farms. He's thrown them for 29 yards in losses with this one. And a big, big tackle made there on the freshman Jonathan Smith. So Oregon State on a fourth down situation. The ball resting at the Husky 16 yard line. And Mike Riley wants to call a timeout. They're down seven with 330 left in the ball game. We'll be right back with the conclusion possibly of this football game in a moment. Well, the fun you have with sports as a fan is second guessing. Riley will not go for the field goal, even though he's got the ace Cortez sitting there, and he's almost assured of the field goal from 25 yards out. And you still have plenty of time, 3:30 remaining. Now, after Smith has been thrown for the loss, on the other hand, it stretches the field a little bit, giving your receivers more opportunity. Fourth down, 16. Smith back to throw, hard rush, unleashes a pass, headed toward the end zone, intercepted. 
Intercepted by the Huskies as Smith threw it up for grab. I'll tell you what, though, guys. That time, we got Todd Johnson, the weak backer for the Huskies, coming hard on the blitz. Jonathan Smith trying to get rid of the ball, Steve, but he really didn't have anything on it. No, he didn't have it. He did all he could do, which is put it up there on fourth down. I think he's smarter than to just let it go if it isn't a fourth down situation. It beats the left tackle here. Is he outside the... No, it comes right outside Kenny Simonton. And it's Omari Lowe back there in coverage to make the catch. Touch a knee, and the Boy, Huskies have it at the 20. Huge play. See the running back is on a check block and then goes through. He didn't check long enough and pick up the guy he was supposed to pick up. Todd Johnson has just been a monster the last couple of weekends, as you mentioned in coverage. Here's Julius Sopo, broken play up the middle, scoops out left side, burning clock and getting the first down up near midfield. Marcus Julius Sopo, Rector Field makes the stop after an 18 yard carry by Marcus. I'll tell you, that's a great time to bring him in because it, the Huskies have been most successful with him on their running attack with him running the football. Yes. So it's a great move, but watch this 56 deep. Brechterfield downfield making the play. Yeah. He hustles. He's got a motor that just doesn't quit. 35-28 Husky trying to cling on to the seven point lead with 258 remaining in the ball game. Well, there'll be some second guessing in Corvallis. Oh boy. Here's a handoff. Braxton Clinton, I believe, was the yeah. Here he was. Braxton getting some late playing time here up to about the 37 yard line. Aaron Wells. Makes the stop. Why you don't go for the field goal there? And then let your defense come out and try to stop the Huskies. That'll be one of the questions asked. You know, I can give you an answer for that. I, when a coach is trying to turn a program like Mike yep. is, I think he, he sometimes gambles maybe more than he should, Kevin. I think that's the situation here. He wants a win. He needs a win big time. The schedule's tough. Here's Tuyas Sopa rolling out, plays it near side, complete to Dane Looker, and he's run out of bounds. I like that first play he called, though, after they got down to the goal line. It was that little lob pass in the end zone, and he, uh, they nearly hooked up on that thing. They showed some creativity down near the goal line, but it was a big play by Todd Johnson. I mean, a big, big play, maybe the biggest of the game. He got in there on coverage at Smith, and he had to throw it away on the fourth down play. Well, I think Steve told me during the timeout that Bruce Reed, the special teams coach, his father, Don Reed, coached at Montana, Kevin, and he had a really prolific passing offense at the University of Montana, the, the Grizzlies. Yeah, and I think the deep, oh, baby. Pitch out, Clement, first down, but Marcus Triassisopo was clobbered. Uh, he's pulling himself up off the stadium turf. Aaron Wright. With the stop for the Beavs. Right there, big hit, but you know, Marcus Tuyasasopa had a lot of those hits when he was at Woodenville High School. Although this is in big time college right now, I thought it was a little bit of a gamble to do. We've seen that backfire on the Huskies before, Kevin, yeah. at Nebraska with a big turnover in the first half of that ball game. But Braxton and Clemen, hey, a true freshman in there with a little pressure on him hanging onto the football. He really gives you fits, doesn't he? To oh, oh, he's a uh, very fine athlete. Look at the yardage, guys. Oregon State with over 500 yards, but uh, remember Smith accounted for the last count of 391 yards, third best all time behind Eric Wilhelm, a sensational quarterback, played the pros for Cincinnati. Breckerfield with the uh, stop down there for the Oregon State Beavers. Clock stops with a timeout called. 132 remaining in the game. The Huskies lead 35-28. They've got a second down and 10 situation. We'll be right back to Husky Stadium in a moment. Washington Huskies locked up in a beauty with Oregon State this afternoon. 132 left in the fourth quarter. Remember the Huskies were up 21 to 7 at half. And uh, here's two yes, so on out of quarterback hands to Clemens trying to scoot around the left side, trying to make a hard cut. This is still a, a dicey situation here, without question. 
Don't want the turnover. Uh, UW does have three timeouts left, and Oregon State out of timeouts. You do have that working heavily in your favor. The 391 yards, by the way, the most any UW opponent has ever had passing through the air. Wow. You know, when you're trying to find things to build a program, yeah. Oregon State's going to find a few they like and a few that, that they can show the kids that they had chances to win it. Here's your now, or I should say, Tuya. So Sokwe's going to scramble out 50, knocked down at the 45 yard line. That'll bring up a fourth down situation. But he did stay in bounds. Oregon State helpless, as we mentioned. No timeouts left. The clock ticks to 110 remaining. Michael Morris played a pretty good football game, stepping in and playing the whole thing. He's been all over the field this afternoon. Tim Alexander is back to receive the punt from Ryan Fleming. Fleming standing at his own 40 with 50 seconds remaining. Huskies lead by seven. Alexander has the ability to break it. March it back five. He's take the delay and it stops the clock. 41 seconds left. So on 41 here on the stadium clock. Well, you just had your punt, your last punt blocked. It's <laughs> wet out there, a wet ball coming back to you. <laughs> Make Watch, you a little nervous. Absolutely. <laughs> Watch number 41 here on the outside for Oregon State. They've got to pick that block up. Let me got back in his own 35, waiting cautiously. Blocks hold, the punt is up, and it's a beauty. Spiraling down, Alexander is 10. Shake and bake outside. Huskies in coverage all around him. He's tripped up and dropped down at the 22. And that will stop the clock with 30 seconds left. It's going to give Smith two or three opportunities here to get it done, to get the tie. And Owen Riley will play for the win. Well, the, the speed here, Tim Alexander, number 10 and number 83, Battle. They're the two guys that can take it long and beat people with speed. Tim Alexander off the field, though. Wide receivers to the left and a single man to the right. Smith is back. He's been able to throw the long ball this afternoon. He guns this one out here to the near side. Over through Prescott out of bounds. That stops the clock with 25 seconds left and brings up a second down. Spacing was off there, wasn't it, Sonny? Yes, it was, and now they've gone to that play a few times, but that time I thought he made a wrong decision on the throw. But hey, right now I just get it to somebody deep, and who knows the way the Huskies have been playing that deep ball today? You know, one little mistake and the Oregon State's gone. You're right. Roddy Tompkins has been the man in these kind of situations through the afternoon. Here's Smith back to throw, looking for Tompkins. Wide left, he's got it, and run out of bounds at about the 41-yard line. Huskies have not really shown an ability to, to stop Tompkins. That's his seventh ball this afternoon, and he has 165 yards. A lot of times he's been able to catch the ball in his own situation. Right here, he knows that this is kind of like the, the dead man zone right here, beyond the linebacker and underneath the cornerback coverage. And again, he rolled out the opposite direction and threw back, so that bought him some, some time as well. 19 seconds remaining in the game. Oregon State with the first down. Smith back to throw, looking deep over the middle. Complete to Roddy Tompkins again. Dragged down just shy of the 30-yard line. Oregon State sprints up the field with 12 seconds left. Might as well go to the big end zone right here. They've had success going down the seam, Steve, today. You see the hash marks down there. I look for some pass down in that direction. Nine seconds and the ball spiked. That stops the clock. The stadium clock showing nine seconds. You got two shots at the end zone from here, at least. Probably, yeah, two. That's it. Right here, look at that wide open, soft zone again. Not get, wanting to get beat deep. However, you can't give yourself let the offense of Oregon yeah. State gain 15 to 20 yards per throw. That's the problem. You don't want to get beat, beat deep, but those are deep balls. I yes, mean, they those, are. Are, those are long, intermediate I mean, passes. Deep. You don't want to get beat deep. <laughs> yeah. Nine seconds left. Smith back, looking left. Steps up in the pocket, guns a pass over the middle, complete to the five, and into the end zone. And Oregon oh. State has scored. No flags. They're and now go for the win. Beavers with triple hey. zero showing will have an opportunity for the extra point. Now, Sonny, what do you do here? You go for a win, you're out of town, you got a chance to win a big game. You go for the win because you said <laughs> yes. it. You want Mike, Mike Riley? 
needs to build this program on big wins. No yeah, question. there's no question what he's going to do. No yep. question. You're Look at this. Win. You're going to go for it. And you're going to win it or lose it right here. Did he throw that ball where I said he was going oh, to? Well, you were right. <laughs> <laughs> you were right both plays. You said down the middle. He spiked right behind the center on the first one. <laughs> two for two. <laughs> you know, this is, this is college football. Oh, this absolutely. is great. This is fun. Uh, the Beavers got to go for it. You know, you got an advantage with your kicker. So you're thinking overtime. The reality is you win it here. Take it home. You've done it all you can to win the ball game. Said a lot to your program. And when this drive began, you asked, "Where's Tim Alexander? He's on the sideline." Well, he was waiting for his moment. He yes, made he was. The catch <laughs> in the end zone for the touchdown. And as it has been most of the second half, it's Smith and Tompkins to get him into a position, and somebody else steps up for the touchdown. It's 35-34. What a tremendous drive by Oregon State. No timeouts remaining. They march up the field. A new Oregon State record. 469 yards passing. Jonathan Smith. Holy Boy, cow. That is wow. unbelievable, Steve. I'll tell you, right here, no pressure. Good throw. Soft zone right there. And Brendan Jones, 13, probably a little slow getting where he needed to be. That was a great throw. I didn't realize it was that good a throw until I saw the outstretched linebacker there. Boy, Oregon State, you never know. There is no quit in this team, as you had mentioned, and and the Huskies seem to be like you know it's like God, don't let us get beat deep, but we play in such a soft zone. The Huskies do that. You, you can't let great athletes like Tim Alexander have that much room to roam. That's right. Now, you know, you see right here, he's talking to James Battle. Battle this year has been throw the ball up in the air and let him go get it. I I can't imagine they'll do that. I believe they'll come something inside combination pattern out of probably two wides. Well let's see where he lines up because I saw it looked like coach Riley was giving him an extra pat on the back for confidence so let's keep our eyes out on that man. Well this has been very typical of Riley. Spread people on one side of the field and go the other direction. Let's take a look and see if he does it. No time remaining in the football game. Oregon State with the attempt at the extra point for two that would give him the win. Simonton offset back. They're going to throw. Smith looking in the end zone. Juggled pass out of the end zone. Oh, game boy. over. Washington wins. Oh my goodness! A fitting into this football game. Boy, I tell Tompkins you. down there near the goal post. He couldn't quite pull it in. That again was Jonathan Smith. That was right on the money. Absolutely. We'll have to look at the replay. But Robbie Tompkins. It's too bad that that young man had to have that happen to him, Steve. Oh, he's, he's had a great, great day today. Made some great catches. You look at Jonathan Smith right there. These kids played their heart out. Too bad there had to be a loser today. Boy, that's a whale of a ball game. Great finish. Oregon State has everything to be proud of. It, it sounds kind of trite to say that now, Steve, and I, I, and you know what I mean. But it is just unbelievable finish. With no timeouts on the clock, they work their way up the length of the football field. Alexander scores on a pass from Smith, who's had an incredible afternoon, and this was a perfectly thrown ball. Wow. Nigel Burton was the man in coverage on Roddy Tompkins in the back of the end zone. Senior co captain Nigel Burton. Oh. Rip, rip oh. The ball was a little oh. behind him, I will oh. say. Roddy Tompkins, he didn't. That's a, probably the one of the worst throws that Young Smith has made in his second half today. What a game. It was. A tremendous football game and a great effort by both ball clubs. We'll be back to recap it for you in a moment. The Huskies hang on for the win. 35 to 34. Wow. Well, the Huskies on homecoming hang on for the win to upend the Oregon State Beavers 35 to 34. One of the best football games I think we have seen in a long time. I'll tell you what, Pac-10 football games, <laughs> Northwest rivalry. Uh, it was an outstanding football game. I think both schools have nothing to be sorry for. Uh, certainly the Beavers came out and proved their worth in the second half. 
I like what Mike Riley did. He was very aggressive at the end. Steve. No question. I can tell you that you've got to go for it. You're playing out of out of your home stadium. You get a chance to win. You got to take it. I don't care how great the field goal kicker is. You got to go for the win. I commend him for that. Well, and the way he changed up quarterbacks too. Terrence Bryant obviously had a bad back, suffered last weekend against Arizona. Jonathan Smith, he calls upon a freshman, has great confidence in him. Didn't change the game plan. If anything, it seemed like they were more aggressive with Smith in there. Well, I think they were, and I think Jonathan Smith uh, has really had a season in these last two games as a redshirt freshman coming in when nobody expected anything of him. He's just throwing the ball super, and uh, the last play of the game was probably one of the uh, more inappropriate passes he threw. It was about six inches off. And of course, our MVP of the game is Jonathan Smith 469 yards through the air. Boy, I'm really impressed with that young man. Uh, if I was Terrence Bryant, I would be a little nervous uh, as far as the starting quarterback is concerned. But I have not ever, well, I've never seen 469 yards thrown here in Husky Stadium. By Jonathan Smith, the freshman who also had three touchdowns on the afternoon. So Oregon State's got to regroup. They've got a game at home against Cal next weekend. They figure they can win that game, I would think. Absolutely. In fact, Mike Riley's teams believe they can win any game. And I think the important thing is what Sonny said earlier. We do have a rivalry back, and that's an attitude from Oregon State. They think they've got rivalries here in the Northwest with all three teams now. Sonny, we talked so much about Smith, but Brock Ewart was very sharp in the first half of this football game, but still Washington unable to get anything outside of Marcus Tuiasosopo going on the ground. Running has been very difficult. We thought Pat Conafine back would give him the emphasis, uh, the momentum to really keep it going for this football game. He goes out with an injury. The running game sucks. It suffers after that, and uh, that's downhill from there. Well, the Huskies have won 11 straight now over Oregon State and 21 of the last 22 meetings between these football teams. Now for Steve Priest and Sonny Sixkiller, I'm Kevin Calabro saying so long from Husky Stadium.